Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world, today the Duff Dog and I are going to take this 1974 Dodge D100 regular cab short bed two wheel drive and we're going to make it just a little bit better. So the backstory on this thing is my buddy the old Mopar Madman, he bought this thing years ago and he's had his fun and it needs a little bit of work, he got burned out on it I assume or anyway, he's got a little red express truck, one of these guys right here. And those things are way cooler than your standard D100 short bed, which is this. So he said, if I'm gonna work on one of these pickups, I'm gonna work on the Little Red Express truck, which if you got a Little Red Express truck sitting in the weeds you wanna get rid of, hit us up, Warnsky Repair at gmail.com. Anyway, we did a little horse trading, jockeying, what have you. He helped me get that 55 Chevy four-door sedan running. That was his first car, not that car, but one like it, or I don't know, first one he worked on. So I suckered him into trading that POS for something that kind of runs and drives. The story on this thing is, I think he was in Fargo, one of the monster trucks, and this thing was on Craigslist because it's sold. It's got stamped license plates. We haven't had those in North Dakota for like six, eight years. So he's at it a while. It was for sale. It had a step side bed on it. It was super rusty. It had a 318 with a 904 automatic, and those were no good. And so he had a crew cab short bed fleet side that was an old military rig, it had been painted a bunch of times. So he stole the bed off of that, put that on here. He got factory buckets out of something else. He had like a 70, I don't know, it was pink Cuda something. Maybe he put like a built 400 that's like 500 horse and then has long since sold that car. And this was a non numbers matching 383 for that car. So he went through the bottom end and stuck some heads on it and put an intake and a new carburetor. So this thing looks like it's got a new carb, new intake. Uh, it's got a fresh 383. It's got a new radiator. It's got a rebuilt, just a mild rebuild, standard rebuild, 727, which is the good Mopar transmission. And then he put these wheels and tires on it. I can't remember what they are, but uh, let's take a look at this thing. What do you think, Duff? Yeah, we're gonna have to go for a ride in it. It does run and drive, but it's got a terrible, terrible, terrible 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 exhaust leak we need to address and it sits terrible 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 high they call these things tin grills even though the grills are made out of aluminum i don't know mopar guys they're special uh chrome bumper with the bumperettes i don't know if that was a factory option i don't know a ton about these things uh, they call these the bird bath hood because you can see where all the uh dirt and water and everything sits it's kind of neat how neat is that uh, it's a it's an adventurer, so we're gonna go on all the adventures. So it's got that trim. I don't know what other trim options they had. What do you know? I know the later ones they made prospectors. It's no dude though. I can't remember what kind of wheels these are. Chin's gonna put it right there because that's what they are. Because uh, the Mopar man man told us it's got Mickey Thompson white letters, and you know how much we love white letters out, don't we, Duff? Pins his ear backs. He's like, no. No, not so much. But anyway, I think they're uh, two 45 60s and two 75 60s in the rear. A little rust in the dog leg. He uh, looks like an aerosol overhauled over it. I literally, I rode in this thing once years ago. I wasn't interested in buying it, so I kind of bought it sight unseen. Uh, rust in the rockers down there. It's got the cute little sport mirrors. It's got stainless wing windows, stainless around the windshield. Um, like I said, this short bed came off another pickup. This thing had a super, super, super rusty step side, he said. Looks like it had some cool old pinstripes on her at one time. But yeah, this bed, I think he said it was like Air Force blue, and then it was yellow, and then it was red, and then he rattle canned it black. And look at this, look at this Mopar rattle can job. He even painted trim on it. And unfortunately, it doesn't look that bad. Or does it? Not bad, yeah. I don't know if he put these bed rails on. Kind of looks like he didn't do a very good job of taping them off and left them on, which I don't hate them, but I wouldn't have put them on there. You can see these wheels been on there long enough to get the caps rusty. Uh, are you are you are you gonna help? Or are you just gonna just be a pest? Yeah, I know this is your show. But anyway, the uh, center caps and the lug nuts get rusty. Part of the reason I bought this thing from him is he is a mechanical fanatic. Like I guarantee he went through all the brakes. I guarantee he put all new hoses on it. Uh, radiator hoses, heater hoses, belts. He just, he, he likes that stuff. And then he gets to the body. 
like me, and then just quit. So, so pretty much we're the same person, only he does Mopars, and I do uh, anything. But, uh, and then wheels and tires and stands. He got the wheels, kind of, they're not my favorite wheels. Uh, Steelies, some like 15 by 7s at the front, 15 by 8s with some, those little Dodge poverty caps would be real good. And then the white letter thing, but. So, we're gonna address the stands after a bit here. Continuing on, uh, it's got a chrome sport bumper. I'm sure you had to source that. Uh, stainless around the tail lights. Looks like he bought a, a decal for the tailgate. He left us a crappy spare tire, apparently, and a quart of oil. The transmission shifts a little slow, so we're gonna have to check the fluid on that. There's a ton of mud in this box. It's, it looks good, but the pickup is, is a little rough, isn't it, Duff? He's like, I don't know, I never got to check it out. Watch out for that mouse trap there. Anyway, the interior is awesome. I don't know if this was in this pickup or what. Dash pad, no cracks. Door panels, not all faded. He put new carpet in it. Like I said, he found these factory buckets or buddy buckets or whatever you want to call them. Looks like we need a gas pedal. But these seats, I think if a guy got some new foam and recovered them, this interior would be pretty much mint. His other, his other forte is tachometers. Oh yeah, auto meter. And stereos, he put a Kenwood stereo in this thing. So there's that. Do you like it? Do you wanna drive it? I guess so. So, bucket seats, pretty cool. Uh, pretty rare option. But like I said, uh, they need some work. These seat covers are horrendous. Maybe we'll just throw those away and see what the seats look like underneath. So maybe we'll get some foam and some covers for those, who knows. No headliner, just steel, but uh, the dome light works. Yeah. The interior is, I don't know about the best part about the pickup. The best part? You gonna stay in there? I'm gonna check out the front. No, no rides. Not right now anyway. It took me some work to figure out how to open this thing. Cause Duff says I don't speak Mopar, so I had to do it. Paint's a little rub through in a few spots. Uh, the old aluminum tin grill has kinda got a couple of whammos in it, but it's presentable. He kept his battery, what a punk. Uh, needs a battery hold down, or that tarp strap is fine. Factory power brakes, it doesn't look like he put a master cylinder on it, so maybe I was wrong. It's got headers, and he said these were some headers he had laying around, and they were crappy, and they were cheap originally, but they were free. Anyway, it leaks tremendously around them, and they hang obnoxiously. Well, they don't even hang obnoxiously low, anyway. They leak real bad, so that's one of the things we're gonna address. We're gonna put some different headers on it. I reached out to uh, good old Floyd at Floyd's Mayhem Garage. Go check him out on YouTube. He's a Mopar fanatic as well. He's got a swept line that's sitting on a chassis like this with a big block, which this is, 383, was uh, Mopar called it a big block. And uh, I asked him what he had on there, and he said he had some long tubes and they were expensive, and he said he had to ding them up and they didn't fit. Just all the things that everybody hates about headers. I said, doesn't, don't they make like a block hug that work? And he goes, yeah, on my Daytona Tribute car with the, you know, with the wing and the nose. He goes, I got these block huggers for like 180 bucks off of eBay. And I said, yeah, now we're talking. He said, they fit up great. And I said, oh, amazing. That's the best part about headers is when they fit because they almost never fit. And then all the horsepower that they make up, that's the best part. And the second best part is when they fit. So anyway, like I said, this... We don't know what it is. It's a it's a it's a mild 383. It's relatively fresh. It's got a brand new carburetor. It fires right up. It sounds good. He put new battery cables on it. He put new radiator hoses on it. It looks like a new radiator. It does have power steering, new plug wires, cap rotor, all that stuff. So mechanically everything's really good, except for those headers are really, really, really bad. You know, the wiring doesn't look like a rat's nest. It's just nice, simple, clean. No flexi hoses. Please be no flexi hoses. Yep, no flexi hoses. I don't know that I've ever had a 383 Chrysler, so I'm kind of excited about that. Let me show you the inside over here. Not much to see. I think that's a, a, a stockish Mopar wheel. I don't know if it came out of this pickup. Somebody's gonna correct me if I'm wrong, but really good looking dash, good looking gauges. Yeah, I think he said the speedometer wasn't working on this one. We'll find out. Uh, no tilt, no AC, pretty bare bones pickup for the most part. But yeah, 
yeah, you can see the foam is 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 pretty pretty bad in that driver's seat, obviously. We're not even gonna start this thing up for you because I don't know if the camera will pick up the exhaust leak. Uh, when we put it on the lift, you'll see his exhaust. It's like right off the headers, and then just a little chunk of exhaust, and then he's got some purple hornies, and then like maybe a turn down or a turn out. But anyway, that doesn't even really matter because it leaks something terrible under the hood. He he's about two hours away from me. He wouldn't even let me drive this home. He says you're gonna you're gonna damage those heads with it. The exhaust leak it's so bad and it's terrible loud. Like I was gonna take it for a test drive when I took it off my trailer. And I drove it up to the front of the shop and said, no, it's going straight in the shop. So yeah, it's, it's super bad. So what we're gonna do for sure is we're gonna put those center dump manifolds, headers on it, headers. Uh, these big blocks, they didn't put them in very many Dodges and they put them in even less two wheel drives. So they make a cast iron manifold that looks just like a center dump. And that's how I got on the uh, conversation with uh, Floyd's Mayhem Garage as I said, he said, well, here's what the stock big block two-wheel drive manifolds look like. He said, they're really hard to find and they're super restrictive. And I said, that looks like a center dump for a GM. Did they make a center dump header? And he goes, yeah, I put some on that project of mine. And so long story short, that's what we got to that. So we're gonna put headers on it. We're gonna take it to boom tube. But before we do either of the above, we gotta lower this thing. I haven't done much lowering on Mopars, but we're gonna do a flip on the rear. Should be pretty much the same thing as a GM. You just take the rear end out, it's below the leaf springs, drop the leaf springs down or sneak it over, set it on top of the leaf springs, put it back up there. You can also put drop shackles in the back, shackle extensions, uh, that works as well. And then in the front, you can either get van lower control arms, which I think is like two inches, or you can get D300, which are one ton lower control arms, which is what we got. You can also cut coils, but uh, from my understanding, we'll see when we get those ones out, is this spring pocket right here sits flush with the top of the control arm on the uh, D100, which is what this is, half ton, and the D300, it's down here. So I guess we will find out. These were a couple hundred bucks on eBay. Uh, I'll see if we can find you a part number. There you go. WSD 26R and WSD 27L. I'm guessing R is right and L is left. WSD 26R and 27L. So we'll see how those go. It should be just pretty much a matter of splitting the ball joint. These things got new bushings, new ball joints, like I said, and they're all painted up. You can't even hardly mess around. Comes with uh, new hardware. You can't, you can't screw around cleaning up your old ones or cutting holes in them and dropping the uh, area or whatever. I don't know what I'm doing. We're just winging it. So, headers, white letters, CD player, all the things that I love. But it's a Dodge, so it's an oddball. I kind of dig the oddball stuff. And it's a short bed, and it's got good interior, and it's got a big walk. So let's give it a whirl. Oh, and it's got a, a fuel tank. Yeah, it should have a fuel tank. It's got a plastic fuel tank. So that's the cool thing about these. The fuel tanks never rust out like they do on everything else that we bring in here. So let's get this thing up on the lift and let's take a look at the bottom side and start swapping out. It's probably, I don't know, if we're gonna start with the rear or the front. The rear, you're kind of set. What you get, like I said, we could flip it and then if we gotta add a drop shackle later or if we gotta have a spacer to get it lower, but then you get into notches. We're gonna try to get away without notching it. Uh, but in the front, you kind of get what you get in the back. There's a little bit of just, but in the front, we can put the control arms in, set it down. If we want to go lower, we can cut springs, coils off the springs. So we got some options up front. They don't really make a drop spindle for these, which is weird because they make a drop spindle for, okay, pretty much just GMs because Ford's got that silly twin I beam. You got to get the dream beams and they're super expensive and they drop it about this far. I like Ford's 67, 72 Ford. They're not a good way to drop them unless you put something else underneath the front end. And we don't do crown vix around here. We did that once. No moss. Gonna run her up on the lift. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> 
Let's take a look at the uh, bottom side old Blackie here. That's what the Mopar Madman affectionately named him, Blackie. It works. We're probably gonna need an alignment after this. Look at that. New brake hoses, new brake lines. Ooh, I don't know, kind of a, he must be afraid to flare because that is a, a terrible bend. I think he gets the pre, the pre uh, determined length ones. Fresh engine, just a little uh, overspray on the oil filter. That's how, that's how you know it's a good rebuild. A whole bunch of hose hanging here. Oh, I shouldn't need a steel fuel line. We should probably work on that because rubber hose and rubber hose that rubs on the uh, drag link, not such a good idea. You can see on these lower control arms, the spring sits right on top of the stock D100s. The D300s actually drops a hair below them. So that's where we're gonna get our drop. We're gonna have to, uh, like I said, undo the ball, or the, yeah, ball joints and this uh, control arm bushing. And then they also got this strut rod over here. We're gonna have to take that loose. Be a good time to put new bushings in those, but of course we don't have those. Be a good time to put tie rod ends in it, or at least a tie rod boot. It looks like he's got new calipers as well, and new shocks. Dang! Dang. Probably be a good time to just do some all around maintenance, grease a few things. Yeah, new fuel pump. He at least painted the crank pulley black, you know, so a little contrast underneath there. This tie rod end looks a little bit better. Looks like they got all the pins in them, so that's a plus. Like I said, there is that 727. It always confused me that the 727 was the good one and uh, the 904 was a bigger number. You know, like a turbo 400 is better than a turbo 350 because bigger number, right? You know, because that makes sense. Bigger is better. Anyway, you can see these headers hang down quite a ways. They probably get into your transmission lines. Oh yeah, right there. Oh, he, he's got header zip ties on there. Looks like he's got a new starter. Mopar's all got the high torque, I think. But then, yeah, look at this exhaust job. Just kind of a quick whoop, and then a little glass bag, and then a pew, so it doesn't shoot onto the fuel tank. I don't know, it's not good. You can see it's leaking there. I guess it's leaking up top. Yeah, we'll give somebody a real sweet deal with some headers. I can't remember what he did for engine mounts, he told me. I don't know if he bought, oh, he, I think he said he bought some adapters or, or something, I don't know. You guys that are Mopar guys that care probably already know. So yeah, yep. That's why the tranny's probably shifting slow is. There's a lot of uh, ATF blood down here, so we'll take care of that. Oh, the neat thing about Mopars, I don't know if it's neat. He's missing the inspection cover. That's not so neat, but the uh, flex plate is just that, a flex plate. It doesn't have the ring gear. The ring gear is part of the torque converter. So if you ever take out the teeth on your starter from your ring gear, you got to put a new, uh, do you? I don't know. Maybe those, maybe those teeth come off the torque converter, but I would assume you have to replace the entire torque converter. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's got a rear cover, so it's not an eight and three quarter. It's something else. And it's probably not as good. And it's probably a one wheel peel. Sure enough, one wheel peel. Like I said, got the big 27560 Mickey Thompsons. No new brake lines back here. God, what a cheapskate. Didn't put a rear brake hose on. Oh, disappointment. But he did put new shocks on and then squish the bushings right out of them immediately. It does look like they have that bolt out, so that might make our leaf. Oh, he's, it's a new leaf spring on this side. He must have had to put a leaf spring on it because the bolts are new as well. And this side is untouched. So that'll make that easier to take apart and that easier to get out of the way. But this side, not so much. Only one scotch clip for trailer lights. Nice. Bed mount bolts. Yeah, don't suck that up tight. Like I said, he swapped the bed on this thing because it used to be a step side. All right. Well, there's the original uh, license plate light for when you didn't have a bumper when you bought them from the factory. All right, first things first, I think let's take the wheels and tires off the back and then we'll uh, take these shocks off and then start taking U-bolts off. 
I wish we had a uh, brake hose. We'll get one of those coming because we're going to have to take it loose anyway. So we got to bleed them. We might as well put a new one on. Or we'll probably just cut these park brake cables because that's what we do. Like a hot knife through butter. And then uh, drop this leaf spring down. Figure out how to drop this one down. Set the rear end on top of it. Carry on. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Speaking of easy peasy lemon squeezy, get your easy peasy lemon squeezy decals from Mortski.com. And while you're there, get yourself a ball cap. We're gonna have a dirtiest ball cap competition, but you gotta have a Mortski cap. Uh, we're gonna do that in May for Cinco de Drinko. So you got a few months to get yours broken in. And then you're gonna have to post your pictures up on the Mortski Repair fan group on the old uh, Facebook. And then uh, Duff's gonna judge them all. And we're gonna send some great prizes out to those folks that got your hats and got them dirty. And if you're one of those people that likes to keep a clean hat, Go ahead, order two. You can have one for Sunday and then one for every other day that you're out in the shop. And then you can put your other day of stuff out on uh, your Sunday afternoons when you're out there wrenching away. So get your uh, swag at Mortski.com. We also got magnetic can koozies. We got banners. We got magnetic screwdrivers. We got decals. We got super scrapers if they're on hand. We got it all. If we don't got it, you don't need it. And there you have it, according to the camera, what, 30 minutes in, get everything dropped down. I like heating up them U-bolts, cause that way, hopefully you can save them. You can cut them with a cutoff wheel if you don't have a torch, but torch, really good investment. Uh, it's something you'll have forever and you got so many uses with it. You can heat with it, you can weld with it, you can cut with it. You can, believe it or not, you can shrink metal and do uh, body work with it if you get real good at it. Uh, but anyway, uh, I like heating up the nuts on those U-bolts. That way we can save the U-bolts and throw them in a pile. Sometimes you get in a pinch and you might need them. I like using new U-bolts, but sometimes you just gotta make them work in a pinch until you can get new ones. But everything's done on the rear ends, just sitting there loose. Uh, we gotta get these springs loose. I, li I like taking them loose at the front so they just drop down. We're in the back with that shackle. You gotta swing out of the way. And that side's got the fuel tank, so the other side, the bolt's been loose, so we're gonna try to take it loose on the back and swing it out of the way. And then the front, we'll hopefully get it loose because there's no fuel tank in the way and drop it down in the front. And then I'll get Mojo to help me and maybe we'll clean a few things up. But anyway, I gotta go get my ears lowered. So I'm gonna head down to Double D's, get my ears lowered, and we'll be back in a little bit. Oh yeah, pretty straightforward. Just uh, shock mounts, and then uh, take U-bolts off, and then the whole shock mount, U-bolt clamp. Retainer comes loose, uh, brake line came apart. Nice, didn't have to give that any heat. Uh, put Croil penetrating oil on everything. U-bolt uh, straps on the drive shaft. That's about it. This is pretty much all the tools I needed. There's even some extras. I don't, didn't use that side cutter. Didn't use that 716 French because I didn't know what size these were. Turns out they're 3 8 Yeah chrome socket to get the lug nuts off because first you can't fit an impact i don't know why they design wheels that you uh, can't get a socket in there the fronts are going to be even worse it's almost like you got to buy a special socket or you got to buy special lug nuts i don't know anyway we might hit up the old lug nut guys and see if they can't get us some new half inch lug nuts because these things are super rusty and i bet they have hardly any miles on them just poor quality 
I can't imagine the old Mopar madman put used lug nuts on these new wheels, but who knows? Speaking of that, does it say what brand these things are? Max load 1600 pounds, DOT, do not exceed other ETs. Dang, 15 by 10s. That's why that 275 doesn't look big. Must be eights on the front, tens on the back. Yeah, you can see how that 275 is pushed way out to fit on a 10 inch wheel. I'd have run eights personally, but that's what we got. Also, yeah, it looks like you painted the brake drums, you know, because you got to do that, fancy guy. And these things are all right hand thread. Some of the Mopars like to have left hand thread on the left hand side, but thankfully, they went away with that by 1974. All right. I'm going to be late. I don't want Double D yelling at me. So we got this leaf spring loose on the passenger side. As you can see, it's going to hit our lift arm here. So we're going to have to move that out of the way. But it should drop down. It should not be a problem. Also, you can see... I had to use my largest spacer and my second largest spacer to lift this pickup up. And you know what that means? No, it doesn't mean it's dangerous by stacking spacers, but maybe it is. It means this pickup sat way too high before. So once we get all this work done, we're gonna set it down. And we're gonna have to jack the pickup up to get those out of there because it was way too high before and we're gonna make it perfect or too low. We'll screw it up one way or another. So let's uh, get this side loose and then uh, we should be able to get that rear end out of the way. Might have to get some help for that. And then uh, swing the uh, rear end up in there, kind of like we got it set now, but with the leaf springs underneath it and bolts are all back together. Like I said, the problem over here, the good thing is somebody's had this bolt out and somebody's probably had that one out at about the same time. Uh, the problem is the fuel tanks in the way up there. And when you take this loose, sometimes the leaf spring won't come out of the way far enough and the weird thing about this bolt is it's a 11 16th nut so it should be a 5 8 head no that other side was a 13 16th head so kind of strange but now that i think about it let's try taking it loose up here because somebody else got it loose but at the same time i see some new bolts in the fuel tank so you always want to look for stuff like this and uh, new bolts in the fuel tank leads me to believe that somebody had the fuel tank out of here which may have been why they may have had it out of here in order to replace this leaf spring. So I'm going to take a peek back there and see if there's ample space to get that bolt out of there. Because it's a lot easier when you take it loose on this end. And it's a lot easier when the dum-dum doesn't put the lift arm right underneath where you got to go. I was going to put it on the springs and I thought, ah, oh, we're going to need to take those loose. I don't want that in the way and on there. So I'm going to put it up here, which is equally terrible. Oh yeah, we should have plenty of room. There's a support device in there, a cross member that uh, should give us plenty of room. Or not. Give her a little coil. I lied, those are most definitely three quarter, not 11 sixteenths. Technically, is it a lie if you have no idea what you're doing? I don't want to be called a liar. I've been called a lot of Late for dinner is not one of them. Just don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> All right, diff delete complete. Poet and didn't even know it. Mojo is back here doing yard work. Broke the skid steer, didn't you? Yep. Well, it's not all his fault because somebody else was outside supervising. You? Is it your fault? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, let's go take a look. Looks like we got a hydraulic failure. That's what I'm told. Put the grapple on the old skids here. Oh, what did you do? Blew that coupler all apart. The old flat face coupler. Well, you know who hooked it up? I guess I guess I could be to blame. Hmm. Well, I guess pop her off of there and I'll look and see if I got one. If not, I bet Whitey's got one in town for us. Okay. Just can't have nice things. 
Dug through my stash and found one of each, but I feel like they're gonna have the wrong ends on them. I think those are for a bulkhead connector. Give it a whirl. Okay. I wonder, I think, if you take that other one off, I think we can take, I think they come apart. This would be the one you need, right? Yeah. Yep. I think they come apart right at that, between that hex in there. Maybe. They must, because how else they get that spring in there? Only one way to find out, right? Yep. If any, we can screw it up with the best of them. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna set that thing down and readjust where we're lifting on the frame. And Mojo's gonna fix a hydraulic. I don't know, it ain't even a leak. I was trying to get it to function. Hopefully we can get those leaves dropped down. And then when we get them swung down, I'll roll that thing in there. And then we'll swing them up. All kinds of swinging swingers today. Man, that could not went any easier. The metal bushing inside of the rubber bushing inside of the leaf spring eye, a lot of times that metal bushing will like to seize onto the steel bolt. And then when you spin the bolt, it spins that bushing and then you can't get that bolt to come out because it's stuck on the bushing, which is too big a diameter to fit through the hole. So they just fight you on the square body Chevys and GMCs. So this was a wonderful treat. Now let's open our lowering kit, our flip kit and uh, see what we got to do. The other thing I did was I, there's, that leaf spring was pretty new, so it was clean, but this side had a bunch of rust on it, so I knocked that off of there. There's some pretty good chunks in there, and that stuff's going to compress and rattle out, and then your uh, axle is going to be just kind of floating on your leaf spring. And you don't want that. You want a good, solid surface for that thing to uh, ride on, so make sure you clean that off. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to take a wire wheel to it as well. But now, since we're going to be mounting the rear end on the top side, you want to make sure to clean that all up, clean the uh, bottom of the axle tube up, check for any damage, rust, pitting, stuff like that. You don't want your rear end coming loose. Nobody likes a loose rear end. You want a nice, tight rear end. So I'm going to open that uh, kit, if I can find it. Hopefully it's not in the pickup. Oh, there it is, sitting on top of our 2617 Roadster. eBay special. Oh my gosh, this one even came with destructions it looks like it's been scanned 400 times and you can't hardly read it not like we were gonna let's open her up see what we got our old u-bolts will notice we're square these ones are round because these are going over the top of their end the old ones were square because they were going over the top of the leaf spring and like i said i usually like to put new u-bolts in anytime you take these things loose this saddle here it's got two mounting holes i think we want it and you can you can either center it or you can offset it. And you can offset it forward or you can offset it backwards. I, can, I always get these screwed up. I can't remember which way you want to offset it. And usually these holes are not the correct size. So you might want to drill your own that's the correct size. But it'll work. Uh, the one thing is you want it at the right diameter so that it rides on your leaf spring centering bolt. That way it can't shift around under load, especially if you got a high horsepower engine, which you know, the 383 Chrysler is pretty much the highest horsepower engine we've ever had on the channel. Some sarcasm, maybe not. We got our nuts and washers. We got nylocks. Well, that's good. We got another one of our saddles. And then we got our clamps for the bottom, which I think, hopefully, we can reuse the stock ones. And we might have to get different length shocks because our current ones have a mounting tab for the shocks all right let's go set that rear end in place first we got to set those saddles up there make sure we got our correct wheelbase that would be one thing to maybe measure before you start measure your wheelbase so that you don't have it offset too far but you're going to know if you got it offset so this saddle is going to sit on this leaf spring center bolt and i think we're going to want to space it back we'll try that if we got to move it we got to move it we're gonna set those on each side, then we'll set that rear end down. All 
All right, she's set in place. You might want to take a center line or a plumb bob and make sure your rear end center it looks like it is. And then the other thing is, these got these tabs right here that set into the existing saddle. And I'll make sure that those are centered up in there. And sometimes it's gonna move and give and stuff. But you wanna make sure your pinion angle is correct. So you might wanna measure your pinion angle before you start. You can always do it later, get it on the ground and then uh, measure the angle of your transmission, measure the angle you're in, equal and opposite. You can grind some down or weld some on to uh, adjust your pinion angle if you need to. I've never had to. Again, high horse applications, things like that. Stuff where you're not dealing with leaf springs anymore is where I worry about that. You're gonna get into four links and coilovers and all that good stuff. So like I said, this is a bolt-on, pretty generic kit from the old eBay, Evil Bay, Devil Bay, whatever you wanna call it. What I prefer to do is you cut those tabs off of that rear end, buy some new U-bolts, measure your length, and then you can buy saddles, your own saddles or custom saddles. I think they're for like a three inch axle tube. They make them for nine inches and 10 volt Chevys, 12 volt Chevys, eight and three quarter volt bars. And then you uh, grind a clean surface, clamp it all in place with those new saddles, get it where you want to get your pinion angle set. And then you burn them in real good to the welder. Then it can't go anywhere. There's a lot of concern people have with these that, that the axle can rotate again. If you had a two wheel peel, 500 horsepower and a high stall converter and drag radials and we're going on the track, then it would be a problem. But in a stock street driven app, daily driver, run around field pickup beater with a heater application like we got, it's never gonna be a problem. I better go see what the old Mojo's got going on over here. You got your hands in the air, what now? Ain't gonna work, is it? Well, I don't know what's going on here. You made a mess. I made a mess. That's the old one? This is the old one. Tech tip of the day, take the old one apart first, right? Right. Yeah. The one that's wrecked first, right? The one that you already wrecked. Yeah, see? Did you find the piece that shot off? I suppose it went off into the deep, dark abyss. Yeah. Gone forever, Aaron Hernandez. Gone forever, Aaron Hernandez. Yeah. So this is a bulkhead and a male in JIC. And this is female pipe thread. Pipe thread. Ew. I hate pipe thread. Well. Looks like Bog is gonna get some business today. So you're gonna run to town and drink coffee and shoot the BS with the old timers and go get us a new part. And, and get a candy bar on the way too. And a warranty. And a, and a warranty. <laughs> Fell apart. Bobcat stuff shouldn't fall apart. Yeah, good luck with getting warranty from those guys. Okay. Only thing that you get from them is a hefty bill. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. Where's our dog at? Well, I better get Duff inside here to do some supervising. He was outside helping pick up sticks with Mojo. Anybody wants a Trino, it's still there and available. I found you. You hiding or what? Come on, let's go inside. Let's go. We got a Dodge to lower. We'll go for a ride? Oh, there your ears perk up. Come on, let's go. Come here. Come on. You're such a silly boy. Let's go. We got work to do. Yeah. Nice weather we're having though for December, eh? Yeah, absolutely. All right. You gonna help put some U-bolts in? Absolutely, he says. Would love to. My favorite thing to do, that and rub against the paint on Pontiacs. Painted U-bolts? That's a new one usually there. Raw steel or zinc plated? Oh yeah, these are not gonna work. Well, they might. See, they got that round saddle in there. That's where they should sit on the rear end. But I feel like it should made up okay with the leaf springs. This, however, is for the passenger side. Good news is I still have the driver's side. The spacing should be the same for the bolts, but we went from a 7 16 bolt to a half inch. That is going to be a problem. I think the shock length will be okay. You know what? We're not going to reuse these on another Mopar application. Anyway, what I'm getting at, 7 16 hole, half inch bolt. We'll just open up that hole. We'll get our reamer out. My favorite tool. Ask Jim. 
The old reamer. Those things are handy. Reamers by Norseman. Not a paid promotion, not a paid sponsor, not an affiliate. They just make a dang good product. They're so much better than standard drill. They make good drill bits, but drill bits like want to bite when you're doing stuff. Reamers. Tapered reamers. Cat's pajamas. Let's open these things up to half inch. I'm going to grab a bolt to take over there with us so we know when to stop reaming. And worst case, Ontario. And worst case, Ontario. You we just throw these things away. Or we could always weld up the holes or buy different bolts. Anyway, we're not out much. It's worth a shot. Conveniently, we have a half inch reamer. Okay, never mind. These are like 5 8 Conveniently, we have a 5 8 reamer as well. Oh, electric drills. So I like pneumatic ones. And my wrist is broken. Oh, dang it. Gonna have to get put on injury reserve oh, for cheese and rice. Yeah. Pneumatic drills. They're better than electric. They don't try to kill you as often. Or be smart about it and don't crank it up to 11 or 15. Now before we remote the other ones, let's see if this fits. As a matter of fact, it does. Now let's flip it over to the other side. test that out as I stated earlier this is a generic flip kit if you if somebody catered to the uh, Mopar folks they would probably have one that would have something like this that fit with your bolts without any reaming and they would also have one of these that's made for flat being on the bottom of your leaf springs and not rounded like this original saddle it has a spot for your shock and better yet it would come with lowering shocks so business opportunity for somebody out there to make to cater to the old dodge boys the ram boys give them a flip kit that has everything they need because we're probably not going to have it all but we'll make it work because that's what we do i feel like we're going to need a persuasion device i also feel like i'm going to smash my fingers Or drop something on my toe. I'm gonna go grab the three quarter inch reamer and I'm gonna touch these up just to give us a little bit more uh, wiggle room, if you will. Leeway, per se. So many poet didn't know it rhymes today. Now, are you gonna be a little bit more cooperative? Couldn't be less cooperative, right? We didn't snug those up very well. You boys and girls seem to pick up on the uh, useless information. So this comes from my, my days in the old structural engineering. If you look at a washer, they make other washers. But this is your generic run-of-the-mill everyday average washer. It's stamped. And you can see which direction it was stamped. There's going to be a, a nice rounded edge. On the, on the leading edge of how it's stamped, and then there's gonna be a sharp edge on the back side, on the trailing edge. And then you can see on the side, the marks where it was stamped. The stamp side should go away from the nut, and the smooth side, the leading edge, should be where your nut goes. It doesn't matter in 99.98% of applications, but you start getting to structural components and they tell you that's the way to put the washer on. I don't know why. It's just something I've retained over the years. It's really silly. And it's really noticeable on really crappy, poor quality offshore hardware. And they make other kinds of washers, machine washers and stuff like that that doesn't have it or your, your higher quality pub. Like if you got some hardware from ARP and you got some washers from them guys, probably wouldn't be as noticeable.
Duff, it's the UPS guy. It's the man in brown, we like him. There you go, there's your worthless information on washers. Next time you're uh, drinking beer with uh, Ted in the shop or Dwayne or Phil or whoever, you can be like, hey, look at this here washer. Shall I tell you, I bet you've been putting them on wrong half the time. I know a lot of worthless, worthless things. A wealth of useless information we are. We get jammed up or what? They jammed us. Not if we jam it. Jammed raspberry. All right, we're just gonna snug these up just a little bit. You don't wanna get crazy. You don't wanna hit these real hard, especially with the old uh, BDBH Milwaukee here. You will snap them off. Believe me, I know I have snapped off new U-bolts. And sometimes, like everything, they're getting kind of expensive. So you don't wanna do that. Call that good for now. Let's go to the other side. You're all patched up? Yep. All right. Back to work. That's what Duff's saying over there. Just eyeing him down. Uh, this is a new one. See how the arbor and the bit are like that? And the battery is like this? Uh, I don't know what's going on here, Milwaukee, but I know what's wrong with it. Ain't got no gas in it. It ain't got no gas in it. As soon as I bend over here, like, oh yeah, you're gonna give me some attention? Of course I am. Of course I am, Duff. You're such a good puppers. But uh, anyway, it's kind of getting warm and it's, uh, it's, I was on the trigger and then it caught and it bit and it sent and it twisted and it twisted the housing so that the trigger is jammed. So how are we, do, oh, I bet if we loosen this up, it'll loosen that and it'll uh, come out of said predicament. Shall we see Duff? This is something new. Oh man, the drill's got a twist to her now. I didn't know those things would do that. Ow! Bad news is, my drill is a couple degrees off kilter now. The good news is, you folks seem to thoroughly enjoy me physically injuring myself. So, you're welcome. Ow! Ow! Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me once. Shame on, shame on you. That would be the best part about being president, is not being president. Because afterwards you just fall off into general obscurity. Unless you're Trump, that guy, he enjoys being in the news. But you don't hear nothing about Bill Clinton or Barack Obama or the Bushes. Didn't Mrs. Carter just pass away? No, not June Carter. Is June Carter Cash still alive? I feel like probably not. Anyway, back to working on a Dodge. Johnny Cash, one piece at a time. I don't remember the exact location of these shocks, but clearly they were on top of the rear end before due to the shapes going on here and the, and the geometries and the trigonometries and the spellonometries, is that a word? But anyway, the shock is fully extended. The rear axle is at full droop. So I think we're gonna be okay because it should have been at full extension before because you don't want the shock limiting it. You don't want the shock limiting it. You want the, the leaf spring limiting it. So I think we should be good provided they don't bottom out. But if they're the right length right now, they should be the right length. Let's uh, whack our bump stops up there. Those will stop it before the shocks. This stud is at a silly angle. I don't know if they're bent. That's the way Mopar had them, but it's, we're just gonna pretend like it's the way it needs to be. Give her some lube. That'll make it happy. 
Usually on a GM, you'd get a shock re relocation bracket because those brackets are part of the rear end. So it just extends it down so you can use the same shocks. Or you can run shorter shocks, but the geometry gets kind of screwed up. So in this, this is amazing. Not only can we use our same shock, it keeps the correct geometry, it looks like. So well done, Mopar. Well done. I was just thinking I could go for a steak, but not well done. Medium or rare? It's the only way. All right. Hopefully the other one goes on just as well. I don't see why it won't, but you never know. It should go on even better with all that croil on there. Sure enough, slid right on. And if you prophesize it, it will come. Isn't that what Kevin Costner said? No. If you build it, they won't come. Kevin Costner didn't say it though. Terrence Mann, is that the guys? I don't know, if you build it, they will come. If you build it, he will come. Field of Dreams, it's in Iowa. Someday we're gonna go check it out. Maybe. Maybe we'll revive a car in Iowa sometime. I hope not. I'd say something bad, but everybody gets mad when I say things bad, like, I said something about Kanukistan. Like two Kanukistanis got mad at me. What did I even say? The best part about Kanukistan is leaving? No, that wasn't it. I'm gonna hook up our brake line up here so that it can't leak anymore. Cause we're definitely gonna replace it with a new brake hose later. You know, every time I buy brake hoses, they're so dang cheap on Rock Auto. Like some of them are $3. So instead of ordering one, I order three of them. So I'm gonna go check the part number on this thing and see if we got one in our stash. Cause maybe it's like the same thing. It's like a 84, 83, two Pontiac Grand Prix or 67 Rambler Ambassador Rebel SST. Super Sport Tour. Who knows? I'm gonna go look. It looks like it's just your standard rubber brake hose with a T at the end, but it's also got the hole for your breather. Doesn't look like anything too crazy. Sure enough, did a little digging and found this centric part number for a 67 to 72 Ford F100 rear. Almost the same thing. Length, thread pitch, all that stuff. I think she's gonna work just fine. Part number is 1506530404, country of origin, China. Anyway, uh, that brake hose is supposed to sit on the rear end perpendicular. The Mopar, of course, sits cattywampus, so there's a little rounded area where it would seat on the rear end. Isn't quite right. So either we can bend those brake lines so that it sits straight, or we can just clamp it down kittywampus, cattywampus. It's going to be just fine. Uh, that bolt is actual the breather, so we clean that out just to make sure that our rear end can breathe so we don't take on an axle seal or a pinion seal. Looks just fine. Uh, the other thing that you want to check on this is, seeing how we move that rear end up about six inches, you want to make sure that uh, the length of your brake hose is the same. So a stock application hose might have not been perfect. You might even need a longer one, depending on where it hooks up to the uh, line running down the frame. But as you can see, these two are pretty much the same length. I hooked this one up before I took it out, and it uh, looks like it's going to be just fine. And you can see that one's seen better days. It's got the same uh, clip retaining method, so it's going to work just fine. You can see this has got that uh, radius that's perpendicular to the way the line runs. And then the Mopar kind of sits at a 45 degree offshoot. So anyway, when I order a new brake hose, I'll get a couple more of these Fords because this is my last one. And I'll probably not get any more of these Mopars because the only difference is it sits at an angle like that. I don't foresee needing those in the future, unless they're super, super reasonable. Who am I kidding? Order two of uh, everything. So that's your tech tip. If you're doing a lot of this stuff like I do, and the stuff's super cheap on Rock Auto, especially like brake hoses that you use all the time, like brake shoes and brake pads, you're probably never gonna use those. And they don't uh, cross apply and there's not gonna be special applications, but brake hoses, radiator hoses, belts, stuff like that, it's good to have on hand. They don't take up a ton of space. You can throw them in a tote like I do and you're good to go. Also, I found one for an 83 Grand Prix rear. I've had it float in my toolbox forever. That one wasn't gonna work. It's pretty much the same thing as this, but it was about three inches long. 
Not gonna cut. All right, let me get this thing installed. All right, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Install. I uh, tighten up all the hardware, put this guy in place without tightening it, and then I spun it perpendicular and seems like it's sitting pretty good. And like I said, we can always go back to the other stuff. And to uh, further expound on what I was talking about about brake hoses, the other thing you can do, if you don't do a lot of this stuff, but when you do do it, have a good working relationship with your local parts store or that one, the good parts, guy or gal like you get a napa todd most people are a wealth of information and if you, even if they're not that bright sorry some of them aren't uh if if you got a good working relationship they'll let you go in the back and go through the brake hoses or the radiator hoses or master cylinders or whatever you got and you might be able to find something off of a 78 mercury monarch that might work for you and uh, you don't have to wait for parts to get shipped to you in several days if it's Saturday or Sunday afternoon and you wanna get your ride back on the road. So, tech tip of the day, keep a good working relationship with your local parts person because they can help you out in a pinch like this even if they don't have the right part in the computer. They might have something in the back that'll get you by. And sometimes you don't even need a part that's in the computer for your application, like in this case when it's lowered or if you converted it to four wheel drive or put an LS in it or whatever it is. There's a lot of good stuff in the parts stores that you don't know is back there. Just don't take advantage of them. Don't be putting stuff in your pockets or making a mess. Pick up everything you took out of the shelf, put it back where it was, because that really annoys them. Ask me how I know, because I used to work in checkers. Remember checkers back in the day? I worked at checkers when I was in college. Good times. A lot of strange people work in there. I wonder if any of them watch my videos. Probably not, they, they're more into like the, the gaming and the streaming and that type of stuff, which not so much my thing. Hey, do you their own. All right, I think we're pretty much wrapped up back here. We can bleed the brakes. I got the drive shaft slid in. That fit in there just fine. Like I said, uh, it looks like we're centered. And the other thing is, if it lines up at the bump stop, it should be pretty dang close to centered. Shocks are hooked up. Gotta make sure we grab our Cyclops, otherwise those things will ride all the way to Alabama. Ask me how I know. All right, I just need to find a chrome socket that'll fit inside this hole for the lug nut up here. Good, good thing about these uh, lug nuts being recessed like this is no matter how rusty they are, nobody's really gonna notice. All right, let's do this. Sounds like a Toyota Camry with a terrible exhaust leak is showing up. All the exhaust leaks today. Well, the rear's all done. You got the front done yet? No. Found a nice thin gear wrench, chrome 13, 16 sockets. So we got the front wheel off, not without a, a hiccup after I used a, a little bit thicker Craftsman thin wall socket. But anyway, we're gonna split the ball joint. We're gonna take that strut rod off. We're gonna take the uh, shock out of there. Split the ball joint. All that good stuff. I pre-lubricated all of the bolts, hardware, nuts, what have you, with some coil, so everything's gonna just gonna come apart swimmingly. And uh, spring's not gonna knock any of my pearly whites out. It's just gonna go without a hiccup, because Mopars love me. Go ahead. All right, Blackie, let's do this. Let's get you on the ground. Tell you what, the uh, old Mopar gods are really looking down on Mortski repair today. It was less than 15 minutes elapsed time we had this thing out of there. The other side's gonna go even faster. Granted, I have a lift, but you could do all this on the ground with a floor jack and some jack stands. Super easy, just 
be safe with that spring in there. But let me show you what we got going on here, the difference between the old D100 and the D300. First thing is they made these things Mortsky proof. They got the L stamped in there and the R in that one. So I'm guessing there's some type of geometry built into this thing for left and right. So you want to uh, make sure you put the left on the left. Look at how much beefier this is. And uh, yeah, it's, it's way wider in there. But you can see the spring sits on top of the control arm and it sits in the control arm. And I suppose they had to make it wider because obviously if you cut that out of there, I was thinking you could maybe just weld a plate and lower that pocket. But by the time you cut that out for that spring, it's really just that flat stuff there. So I would not recommend doing that. Uh, hopefully our bushing diameter is the same size. It does not look like it. So cripes, freaking internet says it's a bolt in swap. We might have to make a bushing. We're gonna have to measure the uh, width on there too. This just goes to show, don't believe everything you read on the internet. There's all these forums and all these guys talking, but until you talk to somebody that you know that has done it before, you just, you can't believe people. There's too many keyboard warriors sitting down in the basement of their mom's house yelling, meatloaf! I knew you'd go, hey mom! The meatloaf! We want it now! That, uh, don't know what they're talking about. Well, Duff made it the executive decision. We had a few options here. You can't take the bushing out of the D300 and then put the one from the D100 in, partially because it's old and crappy and that would just be silly, mainly because the diameter is significantly different. So, you can't swap the bushings. We can make a bushing. It's a 5 ace bolt, originally, in this thing and the D300 lower control arm is a three quarter inch bolt. So we could make a five eighths of three quarter bushing and then use a stock half inch bolt. But then I gotta find material and spend a bunch of time on the lathe. And you know what's better than a five eighths bolt? Five eighths inch bolt? Three quarter inch bolt. So I dug through my stash, found a three quarter inch fine thread bolt, the perfect length. So now we, all we gotta do is remount those tabs. Cause I love using my reamers. I got a three quarter inch reamer. We're gonna remount those tabs. Bada bing, bada boom, we get a heavier duty bolts. Everything swaps out. All you gotta do is, if you ever wear out the bushings in this thing, you just go and buy some new D300 bushings. You're back on the road. Like I said, there's several, you could have machined out a bushing. You could, yeah, pretty much those are two options. Machine out a bushing, use a stock bolt, or remount those tabs and use a three quarter inch bolt. Which, Seems like a no-brainer to me. Whoever came up with that saying probably had no brain. Kind of like that. Was it the scarecrow on the wizard eyes? If only I had a brain. Oh, I'm a failure because I haven't got a brain. All right, Toto, should we get back to work? Let's get this done. Here we go. Look at that freaking hardware. I mean, 5-8 is pretty good size, but Three quarter, real big. That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> well, we got ourselves in a pickle. Imagine that. Can't believe everything on the internet. So, this castle nut, same thread as this castle nut. Diameter, everything, right? Great, grand, wonderful? No, the old uh, taper is significantly larger on the one ton, as it should be, than it is the old half ton. So I don't know what we're gonna do. Cause that's way bigger than that. Gonna have to put some one ton spindles on it. Ah, and we've already reamed out our uh, eyelets on our frame. The good news is that bracket that holds them is riveted on. There's two rivets here and uh, two down here. So you could grind those rivets off and uh, put bolts in there and get a new piece off another vehicle if you screwed that up like I just did. But we're gonna keep plugging away. I don't know, it doesn't look like we can press a different, we can't take the half ton ball joint and press it in the one ton lower control arm, I don't think. And I don't have a big enough, I don't have the right reamer to ream those out. And I don't know how much material would be left after you did it. 
So I'm going to find Duff, and we're going to have a meeting of the minds. Maybe have a sandwich, solve a couple of the world's problems, and hopefully solve this task at hand. Nothing ever just bolts right in. The other thing that guys say is uh, you can use a van lower control arm. It doesn't give quite as much drop, I don't believe, according to the internet. According to the internet. I should have ordered van lower control arms as well because I got a buddy. Actually, it's the Mopar Madman's neighbor, and uh, Mopar Madman sold him the old PPD, the old Palomino, and they put van lower control arms in that. And those guys, it's Kool-Aid Man. We've had him on the channel. He ain't, he's uh, He's got a few uh, ice cubes that are melted. We'll just put it that way. And, and if he could figure that out, it must have been pretty straightforward. So, yeah. We're going to sit down and do some measuring and some thinking and some researching. and Evaluate our options. And see what we can do to get this thing a little bit lower. You ready to have a meeting of the minds there, Duffelopagus? Not so much? Okay. All right, so here's the deal. You can see we got her all bolted back together. The bad news is it's with the stock stuff. I gotta fix that bracket that I screwed up. I just made a $350 mistake because I didn't do enough research. Hey, it happens. So hopefully this video helps uh, one of you folks out about lowering your Dodge. I got the right parts on order, exact same cost. Got them coming from Summit or somebody else like that. But anyway, they should be here. They should have the right, they should just bolt right in. And then I just got to fix my little screw up for my half inch to, uh, or no, five eighths and three quarter inch bolt. So we'll either make a step shim with a longer bolt or we'll just make a, a shim and tack weld in place. Anyway, not a big deal. Worst case scenario, we got to go find another rig, knock the rivets off, steal that bracket off of them. So it'll be fine. Anyway, boom tube has an opening like right now. So we got to get the exhaust off this thing, get my headers bolted on. Yay and uh, get this thing over to him so he can get some exhaust on it. It's gonna be, we're gonna be rocking the old uh, Carolina lean the whole way, just duff dragon tail the whole way because that's what we gotta do until we get parts here. I know, you don't want to have the Carolina lean, the dog dragging its butt across carpet, the lawn, whatever, any more than I do, but we gotta get it to boom tube or we're gonna, we're gonna lose the shop. We gotta get this exhaust done. You can only get so many openings, I'm sorry. So I'm gonna grab a couple of wrenches, maybe an impact, and we're gonna get those uh, exhaust extensions off, and then hopefully we go up top, and it comes apart real easy and goes together easy, and, and the Mopar gods start smiling down on us once again. Right? Are you excited to put some brand new headers on? Oh, hopefully we don't have to hit them with a hammer or drive over them with the Bobcat. That's what we should do with the old ones. Drive over them with the skid steer. Yeah, yeah. So, it doesn't look like there's any hangers. Ooh, we even use the nice style clamps, well, on half of it, and then the cheap suckers on this end, but looks like just a couple of 3 ace bolts, and we'll have the uh, pipes on the ground. Yeah? All right, let's do it. Couple reasons why I don't like headers. Oh look, he's even got the gaskets doubled down. These are such poorly manufactured that he said he said that he knew they were gonna leak from the get-go. But anyway, I don't know about all Mopars, but this has got studs on there, and I think we gotta get those studs out in order to get these headers off. You can see where they're clearanced down there for uh frame the frame rail. Uh, they burn off anything close to them, especially spark plug wires. You gotta use every freaking tool in the toolbox to change spark plugs and to uh, get them tight and to keep them tight. And that's just a couple of things that I don't like. So, 
Oh, these are got like that slip tube. Or that's just really in bad shape. One or the other. How are we gonna get these off of there? I got a I got I got a little little idea. Yep. If you guess that the uh, tool of choice to remove these would be the reciprocating saw, go give yourself a pat on the back. Oh man, a fresh blade really makes removing them headers a cinch. One down, three to go. We're gonna give this guy two cuts because we hate him so much. It's hard on the old saws of blade. You can see just how banged up those things were. Try not to cut our spark plug. Hmm. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna take a couple spark plugs out. And hopefully all the debris doesn't fall in the holes. Look at that. You can't even get a socket on there. You need to put that spark plug in with either a special socket or a wrench. Another reason that I love headers. Nothing would give me more pleasure than to cut up every set of headers in existence. I think I'm gonna have to have a stubby 13 16 just to get this silly spark plug out. No, we might get away with just a ring. We got some uh, RJ12 YC champions in there, nothing but the finest. Oh yeah, that's the other thing you lose with headers is you don't get spots to clamp your power steering, pump, or your alternator, or your dipstick, Jimmy. Think with your dipstick, Jimmy! Now in theory, that should all just drop out the bottom, but because of the theory of headers, it probably won't. There again, they make good headers and they make bad headers. The thicker the flange, generally speaking, the better they are. Look, you can see how warped that flange is. And then they should be machined down or trued up. But I mean, this surface is just horrendous. You can see where all the exhaust is blowing right past them. Terrible. Just terrible. And they still won't drop out. Let's lift it up and see what we got going on. I'm guessing transmission cooler lines? Yeah, it likes to, likes to burn off cables the starter. likes to get your starters hot. Power steering hoses, engine mounts, tranny cooler lines, fuel lines. You name it. Starters ruin absolutely everything. They're like the biggest home wrecker you ever heard of. Oh. Even when you uh, double the gaskets up, it's no good. Yeah, you can see they were just blown right out in the center. And also, I don't think it's a good idea to double up exhaust gaskets. Like I said, he knew this was gonna be a, a, a bad deal anyway, so putting two gaskets on was another bad idea. Look at this. Would you just look at it? Would you look at that? I don't know how. It's like you have to pull the starter off and the transmission off and the engine mounts and lift the engine half out to, to get these things out of there. So I'm sure putting them in is the same deal. Just like I assumed, we're hitting the transmission cooler lines. You're also messing with the shift linkage. If you've got a manual, you're getting into the clutch linkage. We are smack dab up against the starter and it looks like they've been beat on a few times because whoever made these didn't know that you needed a starter on your big block Mopar. And uh, yeah, we're smacking the frame. Speaking of smacking, uh, somebody went full on Will Smith on this guy. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Oh, hey. Maybe? So close. Oh, just, just, come on, baby. You just teasing me here? California ban headers. That's one thing California's got going for it, maybe. <laughs> Hopefully that's as best as dust we just cut through. All right. 
Used set of headers, just needs paint. Hit us up, mortsgearpair at gmail.com. Are you gonna be any more cooperative? It, it, it appears so. But don't you worry. We'll get uh, dicey if we have to. One down, one to go. Oklahoma, this is a paint shaker. Podunk, North Dakota. It's a header removal device. On second thought, before we rip into the other side and mix up the plug wires and find out that these other headers don't fit, let's uh, let's let's put these block huggers on there. Max Fort Industries. Not a paid sponsor. Look at this. Look at that. Look at how thick that flange is. Duff's coming to check it out. Look at how thick that flange is, Duff. Damn, boy, she's thick. Damn, boy, he's thick, boy. Look at that. That's like three-eighths versus half-inch. More gooder. Oh, he even came with header gaskets? I was wondering if we're going to have those. I don't believe there's a right or a left. It looks like they're stainless. I'm sure it's nothing but the finest medical high temp grade stainless, so it won't rust. But yeah, that's gonna seal much more gooder. We could put a straight edge on it, but I don't have to to tell you that it's bowed in right there. God header sucked off. Here's my straight edge. It's a level, it's good enough. There is a strong eighth inch gap in the center there. So how well these are gonna seal up, I don't know. Well, the only thing we could do is maybe find somebody to plane them for us. I'm sure this plate started out flat and when they weld it, it worked. And maybe if we tighten up the center first, we'll have a fighting chance. Look how much better access there is to the hardware. It's only this one and the one over on this side. That's gonna give us problems. Those two right there. But the rest, real good. Yeah, like on a GM, you gotta have special freaking bolts for headers. So silly. Even old Duff is turning his back on the headers. Wants well, nothing to do with those things, do you? Take the old super scraper, clean up this head gasket mating surface. Get yours at Mortsky.com. I like putting my gaskets on schmoo free. Feel free to go over and check out all your high temp gasket ASMR on ddspeedshop.schmoo.ca. Come on, baby, just drop right on there. Ah, oh, freaking A, it's hitting. What are you hitting? What are you hitting? Why are you hitting the block? Can't be hitting the block. Oh my gosh. Schmucked between the frame and the block. Can't even drop it in there. So, what if we pick the engine up? <clears throat> Headers, so great. I bet the manifolds, the stock manifolds drop right in here without doing anything. Uh, I would bet. I would put money on it. Alright, I'm going to pull an engine mount bolt out and see what we can do. Can't say I've pulled a lot of Chrysler engines. I've probably pulled more first gen Hemis. Or second gen? I only pulled one second gen. First gen Hemis than I have Chrysler engines. Pulled a 318 out of a van once. That required a lot of uh, Mr. Hacksaw. I don't know if we ever did another one. I'm all right with that. The less we gotta pull, the better. Get our big old drive ball. Oh, yeah, that's gonna just fall right in. So close. Come on. There. There. It's in there, but it's hitting the frame. Sweet. Of course it's hitting. She is close. It's it's pretty much 
tight where it's got to be but that engine's got to go down a little bit and our headers are hitting the frame right there so we're gonna pull that manifold out of there header and we're gonna mark it first and then we're gonna clearance that frame it should be fine I, it's it's in a really bad spot to bang up that header because you got that collector where it's coming to the header pipe so you got two pieces of metal and you got a weld so you can't really beat on that i've seen guys do a lot of different things and i hate cutting the frame but that's what's pretty much got to be done here headers they never fit ever i don't care what you say and i know these are cheap ones but they still fit better than the last ones all right do a little marking let's lift that up clearance it Quick tip, if you gotta do some clearancing like that, take your time, clean it all up, make it so it isn't super obnoxious and noticeable. Probably like I just did right there. I love when guys do it with a torch and just leave the jagged edge or do it, drill a bunch of holes next to each other and then knock it out. That's the worst, looks like a beaver got after it. There, yeah, she's sitting down on the mount. Looks like we've got plenty of clearance. We could maybe be a little bit more up there, but we still got an eighth inch new engine mount, so it should be fine. I'm guessing this dipstick was supposed to run up through here or something. Oh, it's, it's right in the way. Awesome. God, we just can't win with these stupid things. I'm going to set a couple of bolts in there and raise it up in the air and see if our dipstick's going to be in the way of our collector because it sure looks like it is. We said we wanted to tighten up the center first. So we're going to do that. You can just see the center of that set of headers pull in when you tighten them up. Jump. Good news is it created us a lot of clearance on the frame when it sucked in here. It's going to be tight, but a little heat on your dipstick good for you I'll show you not how it's good for you I'll show you what we got going on here so before I show you look at this that's that looks like it's TIG welded but anyway it's not straight it's got a bend in it and it's uh, indexable so it's a pretty slick piece actually these headers aren't aren't terrible for well under $200 so you see it kind of dumps right on the dipstick but we can put that in there and we can angle it uh, pretty much straight back or back at a 45, not an issue. Uh, the other thing is it, it threads into the oil pan, so if we had to, we could move it to the back of the engine or whatever, but it's not going to be a problem. I guarantee it. Boom tube, he'll make it all better. So let's tighten that up. Don't forget to put the bolt in the engine mount and move on to the next side. Yay, headers! Can we get a spark plug in with a regular spark plug socket? Yeah, probably not. That would have been asking a lot. Yeah, definitely not. Grapes, I tell you. Oh, sure landed on the electrode. Yeah, don't they make like special little stubby spark plugs too for Headers? Yeah. So silly. 
Yeah, it looks like it'd be a straight shot, but not only this guy, but this guy is in the way. How about the old reach around from underneath? I don't the box in. So over headers. Oh, how are we supposed to tighten these up? Can I have like an indexable box end or wrench? Jeez, that's nice. We're just gonna assume that that's probably tight enough. All right, now to see how the old spark plug wire routing situation pans out he does have these fancy heat resistant protective booties on here so I mean that should have count for something I do like it I got these spark plug wire mounting tabs right on the valve cover Good work there, Mopar. If you can't get a wrench on there, you can about imagine how much room we got for a spark plug boot to not get burned off. How's oh, this one already half burned off? Sure enough. And I bet this thing doesn't have 300 miles on it. Great. I mean, how could they not burn off? They're literally right on the stupid headers. This video should be called Two Hours of Ranting About Headers with Mordski and Duff. All right, I think we're done over here. Other side's not gonna have the steering and the power steering and the master cylinder and the brake lines and the starter in the way, so the other side should just go swimmingly. Right, Duff? Swimmingly. I know there's ice on the pond, so there's no swimming, but we can cross our fingers and hope that it goes in. Can't go any worse than the last one, right? Don't say that. On a positive note, the firing order looks like it's the same as a small block Chevy 1843-6572, but it's counterclockwise on the distributor. You rarely have exhaust hardware come loose when you got manifolds, but with headers, it seems like it is a non-stop battle fighting loose hardware. Okay, just fall right out. Smash off all the spark more. Oh. Oh, would you imagine that? We're hitting the frame. Well, I'm guessing we're gonna have to lift it up just like we did on the last one. So let's just lift it up. Maybe we can sneak it out by lifting it up too. What are the odds it drops out of there? I bet it's at least 50%. This is where it would be nice to have some assistance of somebody with thumbs. Hey, we're hitting on the ground. Sure would be nice if somebody without thumbs would lift the hoist up. Gotcha. All right. You can see just how sooty those center ports and that rear port were from the exhaust leak. And like I said, this was in like a tank of gas or less.
right, let's peel these old gaskets off. Run the super scraper over it. And we will be ready to go to boom tubes. Maybe, hopefully. If I had to install headers for a living, I think I'd go clean toilets at a Chipotle for a living instead. Lippity do our header gasket on there. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. Header gaskets. There's a million different ones and paper and pressed steel and yada yada yada. And, you know, everybody got a favorite. I would just soon avoid them. Quick through the all straight edge on this side, same deal. Centers out about eighth of an inch. Are you surprised? Me either. And you could send these things back six days till October, same thing, I'm sure. They're all manufactured exactly the same. There we go. There we go. If we sucked them up, they might be okay, but I think we're going to mark that frame. Nips a daisy this side, too, while we're at it. May as well. Give it a nice gradual arc. Don't cut a square or a rectangle out of there, you know? Make it a nice radius. Or at least mark it that way so that you have good intentions even though you hack it out like a square. Come on now. I suppose before we uh, take her to boom tubes, we could look at it with the Carolina lean. I don't know. We get about this much for the bump stop, but I can't get my finger in there. So we're going to have to put a different tire and wheel on there or raise it back up. So I think we're going to put some eights or maybe take those eights off the front, put that tire on there. What do you think? Steelies and dog dishes it is. Good call though. See what we can round up. Of course, I've got poppers. Yeah. Silly tens. Every time I've run tens, I've uh, run into issues. And every time that I've had tens, it was because somebody else bought them. I've never bought a set of tens. They just showed up here somehow. They never work. We just can't win around here, can we, Duff? So, back blacky outside, and just gonna tilt the trailer and run her up on the bed. And we got a bunch of snow, so it's slippery anyway. And then the bed went about seven eighths of the way up and stopped. So the old HP trailer comes with a single acting hydraulic cylinder, which is basically just a cherry picker cylinder. I put a double acting one on it because it was so god awful slow to jack it up. This thing's a, a Viva brand. It's not even a year old. We haven't even had this trailer a year. Plus I ran it for a while before I converted it. And this thing's been puking a little bit of oil every time I use it and it just, it crapped the bed. Vivor is like the, uh, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Is that what you're telling me? So anyway, we're going to throw a, a big red. I usually keep a spare around because we got it on several trailers. That's actually the original one off my 20 foot trailer from 2008. That thing still works fine. It leaks. No, it doesn't leak. When it gets real cold, it likes to not work like it gets an air pocket in there but anyway between the uh, cherry picker and the trailers we keep a spare on hand so we're just gonna put a single acting one in there and see if uh, big red can get us working plus we can thaw with the bed and load it inside and tie it down inside and yeah it'll be much more better so we're gonna do that it's pretty easy it's just a pin on each end not a big deal but just sucks you can't buy anything that even makes it a year i mean how many times has this thing went up and down you know 100 150 yeah the old harbor freight winch needs a little tlc too doesn't it duff all right let's get to work all right i got our lift cylinder fixed we got our carolina potty squat dog butt dragon squatty potty d100 short bed on the trailer we're gonna run this thing over to boom tubes and uh get some boom tubes put on it and such. He said there's no factory bend card for dual exhaust. I said, well, either we're going to have to go with singles or you're going to have to figure it out. So 
see what he does. Hopefully we don't get any surprises. Or maybe hopefully we do. Either way, it's got to be better than dumping straight out the headers. We're going to do the old uh, Hooter haul on today. This thing's a pretty good rig, actually, for what it is. You done playing with your buddy out here at Boom Tubes? That golden doodle is way bigger than you, Duff. Anyway, Dodge has dropped off. Tailpipes are on the old GP. A little uh, tuning, and this thing should be ready to go. And by ready to go, I mean ready to go to a new home because it's a nice car, but somebody should own it. All right. We'll uh, update you when we get back to working on the old D100 and boom tube's got some exhaust on it. I guess we didn't even talk about it if we're getting single or dual. We'll find out. You get a bunch of ice stuck in your paws playing outside. Good thing we got that nice deluxe bed sheet cover for you. One week later. All right, we just got our uh, D100 back from boom tube. We're going to get her home and Hopefully get the uh, lower control arms installed that are the correct ones that actually fit. And go from there, see what else we gotta fix. All right, we'll see you back at the shop. How'd she sound coming in, Duff? Not bad, huh? Let's take a look at our uh, boom tube single exhaust. Before you get mad, I kinda like single exhaust. Sometimes it's easier to route because it's, it's tight on these lowered vehicles. And then I'm not a big, loud exhaust person so just a nice slight rumble boom tube knows what i like well at least i thought so let's let's take a look at this so he likes to use bend cards like the original bends that these things use so these headers are pretty close to what a stock big block manifold would be so this one he kind of started with a stock bend i guess he used some stainless wire because those are stainless header flanges and uh, looks like he ground her down, so clearly it wasn't the greatest weld. But he said he, uh, the headers, he was surprised the quality's pretty good. So sneaks down alongside the block, both sides, and then you ran this Y pipe, and it places back here. So you can take, you can split them, and also you should be able to take the uh, transmission out without pulling the exhaust off. So how neat is that? That's pretty neat. Oh, boom tube hooking us up right. And then I don't know about these welds back here. If you can't weld good, weld a lot, but I think it'll be good enough for the girls we go with. And then we got, I think he's, they call these uh, accelerator mufflers. I really like these things, all welded design. Pretty dang affordable. Comes over the rear end here and then the way it comes out the tail pipe, she sticks out a little further than I like. Boom tube uses this nice, heavy aluminized pipe. But when we're loading it up, you notice we got a little, a little kinky action in there. So we might have to bring her back to have them fix that. And she's kinked up there too. When you get too many bends too close to each other, no bueno. But I think it'll be just fine. And it sounds really good. The other thing we got to do, just driving it around the yard and on and off the trailer she's rubbing on the tires so we got to get a narrower rim so i got an idea for that but first things first we gotta get that front end down so we don't look like a carolina you know what so let's get these off of there oh i'll show you what i got i think these are by like Rakuto. they came from summit but these are basically a van lower control arm well these are a special lower control arm they're for these pickups so they got the right size bushing here which is five eighths. And then they got the holes right here for that torsion bar, sway bar, whatever. The vans don't have those, and I think the van bolt holes are the wrong size. Long story short, these are what you want, Rakuto. They're about the same price, three, four hundred bucks. But let's get these things on there. Go from there. What is that clip for? Is that their fancy clip for the uh, ball joint? These should be a direct bolt in, and these should have been what I bought. And we should be able to use the stock shocks. So I'm going to work real fast and get that swapped out. I'll let you know.
Sure enough, everything bolted right up. Sure wish I hadn't screwed up that bracket over there, but we'll resolve that at a later time. Uh, ball joints the right size, the five ace bolts the right size, the, the sway bar bushing thinger arm Mopar design of amazingness bolts right up. So should be good to go. I think I'm gonna put the wheel on and we're gonna set it on the ground, see how low it is. Cause before I snug everything up, I think we're gonna have to uh, take a coil out of there cause they're never quite low enough. But look at this. Poor quality craftsmanship. So these ball joints, lowers, are press in. You can see where the press kind of missed and screwed it up. Not a big deal, but they didn't get it to bottom out right there. It's not pressed all the way in there. And with the nut on it, it can't go anywhere, but I just can't get, you know, you spend $400 for some parts, you think they would be assembled properly. And then you look at the passenger side, see how it's pressed flush, that's how it should be. So once we get her on the ground and figure out the right eight, and I guess we're gonna probably have to split it again and cut that coil, but I'll take that thing out of there and we will take it over to the press and press that in place. Speaking of the press, Mojo is working on it. I got sick of pressing in and out wheel studs, running that jack up and down. So I bought myself a, what is it, a Big Red? Yeah, Big Red 20 ton pneumatic jack to put in this thing. So this is a Harbor Freight Special Central Machinery. I don't know, it's, it's not Harbor Freight. Anyway, it's one of them big box stores. And this thing's pneumatic. Makes life go way faster. But the other thing that I hated was you gotta grab the handle every time. And you can run it manually. You gotta grab the handle to let her down. So we're gonna put a, a shift knob on there. Well, we, Mojo, I just came up with the idea. Duff is supervising back here, ain't you? Yeah, everything's going good, I can tell by the way the tail's wagging. What are you building over here? Building a knob. Knob, playing with your knob, huh? Yeah. You your safety glasses on? Yep, there you go. Your, your trifocals. So, we're whittling down a threaded adapter to go on the shift knob with a jam nut. To this sleeve that goes on there and then this sleeve's got a hole where we can pin it in place so then you don't need a tool you just grab the knob right so yeah, we can you... play with our knob all day long there you go, all right maybe we'll show them when we get it done okay. we just had a meeting of the mines we got one of them pneumatic jacks on our cherry picker I told mojo while you're at it whip up two of those and we'll put one on there so this is the same thing same kind of jack oh i got a lock and players clamped on there because I get sick of grabbing the handle every time to lower it down, so I just put a lock and pliers on there. I think my old one, I had a International Harvester half inch or 9 16 wrench welded on there, but I don't like welding them, because then you uh, could take that seal out, or if you ever gotta take it apart. Uh, this one doesn't pin on, so we'll probably have to weld it. We'll have to get creative. This one's a Stark brand. But I tell you what, those pneumatic cylinders make those things a lot handier. I wish my, the pickups, if they had onboard air, we could put those jacks on the tilt bed trailers. Then we'd have some. Because I don't like uh, the electric versions of those, electric over hydraulic, because you know how wiring is on trailers. And if you don't know, it's it's terrible up here in the, the dirt and the salt and the road grime and the poor connections and getting drugged down the road. Bad, bad idea. Anyway, I'm gonna bolt the wheel on this thing. We're gonna set it on the ground, check our ride heights where we need to be, lower it down, cut a coil. You know how it's gonna go, so do I. But let's do it anyway. Make sure she's, yep, it's not on the lift. And it's not low enough. I guess we'll take a coil out. Looks like we're gonna have to take a coil and a half or two. Not low enough for me. The good news is we got all the tools out and we got a lift, so I guess will take no time at all. All right, we got our coil up. This is what I call the flat end. You can see how it's kind of machine smooth there. And this has got our pigtail. So I usually like to go a coil or half coil increments. It shouldn't matter up top, because like I said, it's not clocked, but down here you need to clock it with that pigtail. So we're gonna cut one full coil off. And I don't think that's gonna do it. So I think we're gonna end up with two at some point. We'll start with one.
All right, rinse and repeat. The nice part about cut them shorter is I don't even think you gotta split it anymore. I think you can just sneak it in there. Let's find out. There we go. And the problem is that every time you jack it up, that spring is gonna kind of fall out of place. So if you set the vehicle back down, you gotta manipulate the spring back into its proper location. The cost of looking cool. Randy Gribble used to say, probably still says it, costs, costs a lot of money to look this cool. I don't know that it costs money. Agony, pain, silly things like making sure your springs are in the pocket when you set your vehicle down, that's, that's the pain you gotta deal with to, to look this cool. Dwayne's grumbling back there. Ugh, you lowered that pickup, you ruined it. Sorry, Dwayne. Just kidding, not sorry. You definitely forgot to press that bushing in there. If you want to know the quality of craftsmanship of these lower control arms, who makes them? They send us a sticker so we can advertise for them. Rakudo. Rakudo don't remember though. Press in the ball joint though. There we go. It's still, I think once we get the other side, it'll sit better. It's sitting kind of crooked, so it makes it look lower over here than it really is. And we might have to go a little bit more, but the bump stop is about touching, so we're gonna eliminate that thing. There we are, smashing our bump stop. I think we're gonna go up in the air and we're gonna cut that whole bump stop bracket off of there, because that looks like it's gonna be in the way. And when we remove that bump stop in the brackets, it's already on the bump stop, it might be even lower, so. Let's lift it up and do that. You're a good help, Duff. Yeah. Here's what we got going on over here. We got the old, what's it, high lock, low lock, neutral, high lock. So I think that's a NP203 transfer case shifter. Look at that. How handy is that going to be? No more reaching for your silly black 8 inch tube. Way more gooder. Right, Duff? How do you? Walk into a spot and you're there for 12 seconds and you curl up and fall asleep. You're not much help today. Well, are you going to tip my jack over on its side? Watch your toes. Are those uh, steel toes you got there? Yep. Yep. Velcro steel toes. Oh. So this one, I guess we're going to take that all the way out of there and see if we can't find another one that threads in there that's got a pin. I've never taken these apart, but Mojo has. He ain't afraid of nothing somebody else's money <laughs> that's all it is just just a little not a needle and seat but a I don't know kind of like an idle air mixture screw that's all she is the reason we laid it on its side so the oil wouldn't run out so we got another spare failed jack over here hopefully that one will thread right in Good enough for the girls we go with. Maybe not, huh? A little like a glove. He like a glove. There you go. Now you just gotta do all the hard work. Yep. All right, I'm gonna lift this up, cut a bump stop, and bracket off. And if we do it right, when Dwayne buys this thing from us, he can weld it back on there himself. We'll throw it in a box, in the box, to get wet and thrown away later with the headers that are back there. I tried ponding those off on BoomTube. He said, I got a bunch of those in the barn that the barn fell on. That's a good spot for them, I said. Poor headers. We should, we'll have to do some giveaway. If you buy a beanie cap and you uh, want a chunk of header, let me know. First to be, first to go will be the flanges. We'll, we'll throw one of those in your, in your beanie hat purchase if you want. Comment in your order. I don't know why anybody would want those, but people like, oh, this would be the good one to get. Two-piecer. So you see here's our bump stop. Here's the bracket that sticks down. Man, that's like a solid three, four inches. So we're gonna cut that off nice and clean, hopefully. So if somebody ever did want to put it back on, they can. So we're not gonna use the torch. Plus, I don't want the torch by this brake hose and the spring and everything else. You definitely don't want to heat a spring. That is the biggest hack move ever to lower a vehicle. Don't heat springs because you never get the heat 
the same left to right it screws at the spring rate they ride rough they bounce around they go bing bang boing no say no to heating coils that's like i'd rather you ran craigers before you heated coils absolute biggest hack move in the book probably it's right up there anyway uh, right up there with cutting bump stops off so uh, we got to press this in anyway so i'm going to pull this all apart we'll get this all out of the way and then with that spring out of the way we should be able to cut that from the back side yeah let's give it a whirl trial and error here Oh yeah, look at all the clearance we got, Clarence. That's like a lot. Two four. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? That's like many, many inches. So if you really wanted to, you could cut this thing down and shorten it up and still have a bump stop, but we can do that later. We're not worried about it for now. So let's go rip apart the other side and uh, get this thing together. On that other control arm, I did notice this little knob right there is hitting up inside the frame. So I'm gonna clear inside a little bit. I already did the other side. Just gonna take a flat disc to it. Should be plenty of room. And just like that, we're ready for reassembly. Sure makes it a lot easier when you don't ream the holes out to the wrong size. Hopefully a dammit can make us some bushings to put in there. Oh man, we got her, I'd, I'd say sitting on the ground, but it ain't, she's still sitting on the lift. So she's gonna be even lower. I think we nailed it, Duff, I think. We nailed the look of the old Dodge here. So we're going to go up in the air and uh, put the shocks in. I had a damn it, make me up some cute little wedding bands. I don't know what he was talking about. He said rings don't plug holes, whatever that means. So we're going to pull that 9 16 bolt out, or 5 8 actually, and slip these guys in there, maybe even put a tack weld on them. Haven't determined yet so that we can fix my screw up. Anything else we got to do when we got it in the air? Oh, yeah. Thanks to uh, all the people sending us Christmas. This is a good one. Tyler Gets Laugh. He gets his name mentioned because he autographed it. His wife put a nice letter. He uh, made, <laughs> made a calendar. Apparently, January is not included. We just go straight to February. Seems like uh, a good guy to drink some bush lights with. I didn't know the Easter Bunny was into bush lights. Apparently they are expecting, or they had a child. He likes armadillos. Ooh, and bush apples. Uh, that's, think of the, the amount of time and effort that went into to taking that photo. Or don't think about it. He's a, a tank supporter. Yeah, yep, there he's got his Morsky shirt on. I guess that was at the State Fair Demo Derby. Hopefully he won. 
anyway, I don't know if that's him as Santa Claus. I thought there was one with him. Yeah, there we go. There's January. We've got that Morski repair shirt. Get yours at Mortski.com. Thanks, Tyler and Steph and Aiden, Courtney, and Holden. Well, and of course, you know the Warners. You probably recognize that interesting character right there. And yeah, a few people sent some cards. Uh, I can't think of, these guys are from Hazen. I can't think of his Jameson, I think is his name. His dad actually sent these. He had kind of the twin to our two door, but his is a four door version. Look at that fancy dual snorkel chrome air cleaner he's got on his small block. Anyway, I ordered some magnets. We'll stick these to the back side of my toolbox. So when Chin's daughter Paisley comes over, she likes to line them all up so she can pull those down and line them up. But yeah, you can send these to P.O. Box 1 if you wish. All right, let's get back to work. Duff says, enough with the uh, holiday cards. Those things fit so tight, you can't see them. I figured if I put a spot weld in there, a tack weld, it would just screw up the mating surface. So, that a damn it, he does good work. All right, let's put some shocks in. And this thing would be uh, ready to go. Just uh, talked to old uh, Tiffany, and she said if we put limiting straps on this front suspension, we wouldn't have to deal with this uh, spring coagulation and such, so. Maybe that would be ideal. If you don't know what a limiting strap is, it, it keeps the suspension from sagging when you lift it up. So if we put this, lifted this up and set it right where it needed to be where the spring wouldn't pop out, and then put like a, basically a bump stop on the upper control arm between the uh, upper control arm and the frame. Yeah, so it can't, it can only come down so far and the spring couldn't come out. That would be way good. But we're not gonna because it's never gonna get lifted up again because it's a Dodge, we're never gonna have to work on it. Chin was driving to work today and he, and he, he was talking. He, he had a, a Tiffany with him this morning, don't tell his wife. But anyway, Tiffany said, instead of Merry Christmas, since we're working on a Dodge and this video is gonna come out on Monday, which is Christmas day, so Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, all the other things to you and your family. And he said instead of Merry Christmas, because this is we're working on a Mopar, it should be Merry Chrysler. So Merry Chrysler to you and your family <laughs> from Chin and Mrs. Chin and Paisley and, and Duff and I. Go around and start, tell your, tell your car buddies, your Mopar buddies, tell them Merry Chrysler and see what they do. Maybe we'll have to make a, a, a terrible t-shirt next year. Merry Chrysler. Yeah, and then we can have like a little, the, what is it, the Pentastar? We could have the, the Pentastar on top of the tree. Maybe you're onto something, Chin. Missed opportunity. All right, I'm gonna put some shocks in. Got our front end all back together. We got our cotter keys and the lower ball joints. I put cotter keys in because I didn't like their spring pin key thingy mobopper. Actually, our shocks help limit the amount of travel that our lower control arm can do. So we're using the stock shocks. Seems like they're gonna work just fine. We'll find out if they bottom out later. But uh, that's keeping the spring in place. We gotta address the back here because those tires are rubbing. So 15 by 10 wheels, I got a handful of sets, pairs of them, and they seem like they never fit. I mean, you don't get a much wider wheel well than a pickup. You got the right offset. Uh, they're ETs, but anyway, I guess he said he had them on his, he had a 68 Charger, 970, had them on that car, and then he put them on this thing, and he said they got hardly any miles on them, but anyway, they rub. So let's resolve that. We're gonna put the best dang wheel, knowing the man on there, the old torque thrust. Definitely not a Kreger. So let's go do that. We're gonna use the existing Mickey Thompson tires. These things are date coated 
two of 09, so February 09, so that's coming up on 15 years old, but they always been inside, so they ain't been on the sun, they don't got a ton of miles on them, but that's a 15 year old tire. Usually don't like running those, but like I said, they've been inside, so should be fine. And plus we're just kind of doing a mock-up with what we got here. Ideally, I'd love to get some 15 by eights and 15 by seven, the old Mopar cop style wheels. Looks like they're about 177 bucks on Summit or whatever. And then I got these caps. I was hoping I had some steelies laying around that they would take these caps, but the 15 by eight steelies that I got are take the inside nubbin caps, if you know what I'm talking about. So long-term, that's what I'd like is some Mopar police rallies or police wheels, 15 by eights and seven, and then run these guys with these drilled holes in them. I just thought these are a neat wheel set up, but we're not gonna run those right now. But what we got here is a 15 by eight and a half American Torque Thrust D. It's got the curved spoke here. Uh, these use the conical style lug nuts. I checked to make sure that I got half inch lug nuts that are uh, not conical, they're shank. I don't know, they call it shank. Make sure you got the right lug nuts. Don't mess around with the wrong lug nuts. Also, tech tip of the day, get yourself the shortest valve stem you can get because they're not obnoxious, they don't stick out, they don't get caught on things, they don't break off. They're not ugly and have a chrome sleeve on them like the old Mopar Madman had on these things. Ugh. Hideous. But we're gonna throw those Mickey Thompson Sportsman STs on there and uh, put these guys on there for now. And we'll see what we got for clearance that way. Like I said, this is an eight and a half with I think a four and a half inch backspace. So we'll know what we can put for steel wheels on there. Who knows, we might get a matching pair for the front and put on there. Or maybe I'll scrounge something up. We'll see, but we gotta get some clearance for clearance. Bad news, this wheel isn't gonna work. Good news, I didn't have fronts to match it anyway. I don't know what I'm, what I'm saying. I like the look of it. It is hard to beat a set of spokes. But, as you can see, we're gonna crash into that fender lip up here. Maybe we can only get Oh man, we got all kinds of room on the inside. These must be a four and a half inch backspace. We need a 15 by eight with three inch, maybe four inch. I'm gonna go grab, some, I got 15 by eight seals with a four inch. I'm gonna try those. Dang it. Here's the lug nuts we were gonna use. You gotta have that washer and that shank. And uh, you can get these from the lug nut guys. Use promo code Mortski for free shipping on all orders under 35 bucks. Go check them out, lug nut guys. Them, www.lugnutguys.com. Cause I tell you what, that is another pet peeve of mine. Using the right lug nuts. Cause if a wheel falls off, it doesn't matter how much horsepower you got or how good your brakes are, you're gonna have issues. So use the right lug nuts. Make sure they're the right diameter. You got the right taper, you got, they they don't even care if they're not shiny, but make sure you got the right lug nuts. So, we got a steel wheel off the shelf, 15 by eight, and we're gonna mount this Mickey Thompson on that now. But I got a tire machine, because it gets a workout around here. Oh yeah, and make sure you put the white letters in. I don't know if I can say this, but I kinda like the white letters out on this pickup. But they're definitely going in. So what we just took off was a 15 by eight and a half with a four inch backspace. And if that thing would have been a four and a half inch backspace and move that wheel in, another half inch we'd have been fine. Cause we got a 15 by eight with a four inch backspace. So that means there's four inches of rim outside the axle. That one there's four and a half inches. And uh, this looks like she's gonna clear. It's gonna be tight, especially when we get a load on her, but I think, I think she'll do. Maybe we could put these on a seven inch rim and then if with a whatever zero offset it should give us another what half inch clearance out here like i said these wheels they got that little t 
tits in there and those are require the inside hubcap kind of like a baby moon something like that so those won't accept our hubcaps tough's checking them out he says i'm gonna piss on that tire so you can clean it up because it's dirty but yeah that's what we need great grand wonderful good great grand wonderful the funny thing is these are 15 by 8s up front so those would probably work on the back for us but I don't like these because they got like, they got no dish to them. Those tens got some dish, but for an eight inch wheel, they got no dish. And then we'd have to find either another pair of eights or sevens or sixes or whatever for the front. Cause you gotta have a wheel stagger. So, and I just, I don't mind those wheels, but I don't love them. So I think we're gonna, we're gonna do some wheel shop and I might go dig through my stash and see if I can find something. And obviously we're gonna have to paint those, but I don't want to paint them because they're not going to stay on there forever. So why paint them? They got pretty nice red paint. I think these actually were on the 67 Rambler. The Rebel SST. And the gentleman who bought that was so kind to ship them back to us. So those things have been, when I bought them used, they were already painted red. I like these steel wheels because you got a lot of options for hubcaps. And, and then they got the four and a half and four and three quarter bolt patterns. You can put them on different stuff. They're uh Nice wheel to have around. If you see these affordable at a swap meet, pick them up. I think they're, you know, 150, 175 bucks a piece new. So if you see some for 50 bucks a piece, snag them up. They are good property and real handy for mocking stuff up. So, yeah. The other thing I noticed is our pinion angle is absolutely botched. She's uh, doing one of these and it should be like that. So we're going to lift it up. Maybe take some measurements, figure out where we're at. Because you got to set it all at right height. And uh, like I said, we're not even on the ground yet up front. We're still sitting on the lift. She's going to come down some more. So we're going to have to do a little figuring and measuring. But we got to adjust that. Otherwise, she's going to... We're going to have a vibration, I got a feeling. But at least we got the wheel size fitment back here figured out. Kind of. Maybe. Probably. Who knows? But unfortunately, we got to do one of these videos every week. And... We're not going to have these wheels. And especially with the holiday that you guys are celebrating today. How? We got candy cane wheels. And red wheels are okay on some things, but they just, they don't do it on this pickup for me. But yeah, we're not going to have, long story short, we're not going to have wheels until after the holidays. So we'll have to figure that out later. But like I said, I'm thinking I'm going to get those Mopar rallies, 15 by 8s, put those caps on there, do some 7s on the front, again, caps on there. They already come painted black, slap them on. Steel wheels, you can go get cheap, regular zinc plated lug nuts off the shelf or use the rusty old stock ones. You don't have to spend any money on lug nuts. You will spend a few bucks on hubcaps. Those hubcaps are not cheap. No hubcaps are anymore. That's the other thing. If you sign up, find a set of hubcaps you like at a swap meet or you're at a garage sale and you find a single here or there that you like, pick it up because if they're affordable anyway. If you can pick up a hubcap for five, ten bucks, do it because good hubcaps. 100 bucks is a cheap set. Some of these hubcap sets are going for well over 100 bucks a piece. So $400 for a set of hubcaps. Yeah, so whoever was stealing all these hubcaps back in the day was a problem. That person is like the Bill Gates of uh, hubcap people now. All right, we're gonna uh, mess around with this pinion angle next. Or maybe sit back and have a sandwich and admire that wheel and how ugly and red and not having a center cap it is. We gotta find some steelies for the front too. Ugh, this thing's gonna have a terrible thumbnail pick just because we don't have the right wheels and tires. Sucky. I just couldn't give up on these torque thrusts and I never did set it on the ground. So I mounted another tire on the torque thrust. We had to take the tires off those 15 by 10s anyway, and put it on the other side. And then sometimes these beds, the, the rear end isn't centered or the bed isn't centered, but yeah, it's not gonna work. Let me show you. As you can see, I can, Barely get my fingers in here with this 15 by 8 steel wheel, and that's a four inch backspace, so it's zero offset. We should do a Mortsky minute on that. And then this is a 15 by 8 and a half with a four inch backspace, so it's a half inch further out, and uh, I can't fit my fat fingers through there, but dang it, that looks good underneath there. So I think we need a 15 by 8 with a four inch, a three and a half would be ideal, but you. you that's, you don't get a lot of options. It's pretty much four inch with a 15 by eight anymore. So steel wheels it is, unless I uh, decide to go with 
ordering some new torque thrusts. So here's the thing with torque thrusts. Uh, you gotta buy the lug nuts, where with a steel wheel, you probably got something laying around and the lug nuts are cheaper. Uh, with a steel wheel, you gotta paint it. So if you rattle can it, you've got a few bucks into it, but if you're gonna have somebody paint it, powder coat it, whatever, you got a few bucks there. If you're gonna buy beauty rings, that's more money. So it's kind of a toss up. And a lot of people are like, oh, it's way cheaper to go with a steel wheel. No, it's not. Steel wheels are expensive if, if, if you're buying new ones. If you got some 15 by eights laying around, awesome but they didn't make a lot of 15 by 8s most of them are aftermarket and they're kind of hard to find and then you got to find the right center for your hubcaps and all that but steel wheels aren't cheap everybody's like oh you just just cheapskate with steel wheels but i think where that carries over is from the old dog dish hubcap days the, the cheap cars have steel wheels with cheap hubcaps but they're not cheap anymore dang it it's it's cheaper to go with an american wheel and they're about the same price 160 to 180 bucks a wheel uh, like I said, you spend a little bit more on lug nuts, but it more than makes up for it with hubcaps. And then you got, they're probably used hubcaps. So you got to clean them up. Steel wheels are easier to clean. That is one thing you can just pretty much wipe those off where any aftermarket aluminum wheel takes a little bit more scrubbing to keep them clean. So take that with a grain of salt, but it is definitely cheaper to go with brand new American racing torque thrust than it is to go with steel wheels, in my opinion. All right. I'm gonna go find some number 60 chain for Mojo, for Bernie, the, the chain that goes from the PTO shaft up to the gearbox. It's probably from 1974 and it's all worn out, so I'm gonna run over to Pookie's and see if they got some number 60 chain from their combine chain collection parts room. And uh, so he's got something to do, so. And then when I come back, I'm gonna have to figure out that pinion angle. I'm gonna keep thinking on wheels. I don't know what to do. I'm not in love with these wheels and I feel like I gotta have something for the thumbnail. Oh yeah, we gotta fix that pinion. That's the big thing, so we can do a test drive. Cause we ain't even really driven this thing. Drove it off the trailer in the shop, that's it. I don't know if this shows it, but that rear end is pointing sky high. She should be angled down quite a bit more. And I think I found the issue, the old 50-50-90 rule bites me again. This tab on these brackets is longer than this tab. So it's tipping the rear end up. So we gotta lift this thing up and uh, swap those from side to side. So. Easy enough. Take these loose, put our jack, lift the rear end up. So let's do that quick. It's always something. It would help if some of these kits came with instructions. Like instead of charging me 120 bucks and no instruction, charge me 125 and put a piece of paper in there so I don't screw it up and have to take it back apart again. Should have caught that. Oh well. Sure enough, these are the same length. On to plan B. Who's here? Get him! Tear his face off! Man, look at you, you stud. Got your latte shirt on, got your collar popped. Let's just get ready to go to the in-laws, so. What a good time. Got your name on your jacket so you don't put the wrong one on. And your, and your cap? Down. Got your steel toes on, ready to go to work. Getting right, let's do it. Let's send them on the road. You can give me a ride to Fargo. No, we don't want to go to Fargo. Duff says. You are? No. We could probably give you some crap box out of the back to drive. <laughs> That'll work. You know how to weld? Not really. <laughs> I'll try, try. try anything once. All right. We'll oh, go. So I put a lot. Weld a lot, right? If you can't weld good, weld a lot. I could do that. All right. Well, we'll go get him his family pictures. Right, Grumpy? All right, so I had a meeting of the mines with the Duff. This thing is the same length, so we could cut one end off to get the right pitch of our uh, pinion. pinion angle. These guys are what you really should do, but the spacing is wrong for centering our rear end, which we never really centered it before. But you gotta offset it when you flip it. You gotta move it back a hair, and then you should drill I don't like these kits because that hole isn't the right size. It should fit nice and tight on the through bolt on the spring. These don't, they, there's some play in there. So you should drill it out to the right size. You should probably flip the bolt the other way so it's got that nice round head, so it's got a nice tight fit. Yada, yada, yada. And then you should use these and then weld it to the rear end so it can't go anywhere. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these legs off of there. But you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dane. And then we're gonna clean this 
arc up a little bit, and we're gonna clean the rear end up a little bit, and we're gonna put this in there, and we're gonna get the rear end, ang the angle of the dangle, of the pinion where it needs to be, and we're just gonna put a spot weld on it. Instead of using these tabs to keep the rear end from rotating, we're gonna use our welds just like they did from the factory. How about that? How about that? I'm a genius, didn't cost us any more money. But like I said, the right way to do it, get these things, fill those holes in, drill the hole where it needs to be, and drill that hole to the right size and probably flip the bolt up. But you know, we're, we're gonna do a slight amount of, amount of hackery here. And we're not gonna put a big weld on there. We can always cut this off and, and do it right. Right? Right. Now that we got this modified, we're gonna do a little grinding on the diffy tubes and put this in place, set it to the angle it needs to be, and uh, give it a little spotty spot weld. So we got our axle centered left to right, measuring from the backing plate to the spring. And then we also got our pinion angle set. The transmission is tipped down five degrees. So we tip the rear end up five degrees, equal and opposite. So that usually works for me. There's a million ways to set pinion angle. Go read on the internet, pick whatever way you choose. But I usually just go equal and opposite. Anywhere from like three to seven degrees is usually what you find. It. So I'm gonna grab the welder, burn that in tack it in, probably not burn it in, just tack it in, we'll suck it down, all good. We can probably suck it down right where it's at. That's what I might do, so then you know, I'll recheck it, and then well, so it's moving the meanwhile. Good idea. Got our U-bolts all clamped in place, double check, we're still at five degrees, so we're gonna get the old Miller 200 out, burn her in in a couple spots. It should be ready to go, I think. All right, doing a little service work on here. You saw we greased the front end earlier. Check the rear diff, put like a quart or better in the rear diff. So clearly we got a leak there. Somebody didn't fill it up the last time. Uh, now we're doing an oil change. We got a Baldwin B2 filter. It had a nap on it and it still had overspray from when you put the engine in it many years ago. <clears throat> it doesn't have many miles on it, but just a good thing to change oil. A lot of people commented about how I should have changed oil on that big block and that would have saved that engine, but judging by how the inspection cover was off, the uh, previous owner was well aware of the issue that was at hand and he was trying to determine that and then just put it in the weeds and pawned it off on me. Uh, we ran a lot of engines on old oil. It's not usually an issue. We've ran engines that had, look at that Torino, for example, had a gallon of water in there. Drained the water out, ran it, it was just fine. So, me not changing it on that big block. Didn't do it any good, but I think it was shot before. But also, while I was under here checking out this fuel line, I noticed we got an oil leak. So, let me show you what I found there. So you can buy a new fuel line for a 383, which is probably gonna be a little bit different than our intake, but I think I'm gonna buy one of those lines for $20. I think it's stainlesslines.com or stainless steel lines. And then we'll just modify the other end for the carburetor, because I hate all this old rubber hose. But our oil leak is coming down right here out of the fuel pump. And you can see our fuel pump gasket. It's just kind of hanging out there. So apparently he replaced the fuel pump in the vehicle and just kind of playing around down in the dark. And yeah, didn't get the fuel pump gasket in the correct place. And that's kind of causing this seepage we got going in here. So we're going to clean that all up, take this off, see if we can't scrounge up a gasket. I think it's the same as a small block Chevy. The old Mopar Madman screws us over again. Oh, that's like the third or fifth one I've seen like that. I know for sure that motorhome engine that we jumped across the road, that was like that as well. Those guys didn't even have it anywhere close though. All right, 
Let's rip that off there and see what happens. Hopefully we don't get fuel running all over. Should be okay. Oh, so close. Yet so far. Oh, and even siliconed it. Jeepers, what a hack. It's some DD Speed Shop stuff right there. Good chance to use our super scraper. Get your super scrapers at Mordsky.com. Just got a fresh batch in. You will not get them by Christmas because that is today for you viewers. But we'll get it to you as soon as we can. You should have it early in 2024. We'll be using my favorite model, the most uh, general purpose utility tool of all of them, the SS1. Since we had our grease gun out, I put some grease on this. This should A, hold it in place, B, make it easier to remove next time when we won't have any gasket material stuck in place, and C, might actually help it seal up. So, many advantages to greasing a gasket. Let's put our Cyclops light. Hopefully you got a Cyclops light for Christmas. They're pretty good stocking stuffer. Where do we need to go? Oh, we gotta put the, uh, I've never done a Mopar fuel pump. So this might be interesting. The push rod is in the way, so we're going to take that plug out and put the push rod where it needs to be. Last step, wipe her all down so we know if it's a new leak and not residual oil. In order of fuel lines, so we can get rid of this ugly hose that's hanging here. All right, checked all our fluids, should be good. Rear brakes, 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 brakes are bled. It's been a long week. Merry Christmas, everybody. I'm ready for it to be here. Just another working day for us. Ready to go for a ride for the first time on this thing, Duff? Uh, tighten up the power steering and the alternator belts. Mopar uses an interesting design for that. Topped off the coolant. Sounds good, huh, Duff? Even Mojo said, sounds pretty good for a Mopar. Got a little exhaust leak on the header on the driver's side. Dug into it a little bit, couldn't find anything, so. We'll see. Brake light's still on on the dash. I don't know if that was always on or what, but. Brakes feel good. First thing we're gonna do is go put some petrol in because it says it's empty. And the Mopar, we got a clunk up front. I would highly recommend getting an alignments after doing any major modifications like this. We're gonna put some fuel in because the madman said that that gas is a few years old because he never drove it enough to burn a tank out. And that is the first time it's ever hit second gear since I owned it. And there's something really angry growling underneath. Like real bad, like we're turning around. <laughs> Tire rubbing? That was a short lived first drive. As long as we look cool doing it, right, Duff? It's real angry, whatever's grinding. The drive shaft's definitely rubbing on something. Or a wheel. Did you tighten all the Wheel studs, blinkers work, 
That's a plus. Can't imagine lowering it, the wheel, will cause the wheels to hit anything. Maybe it's hitting on like a ball joint or a control arm? We're about to find out. Dang it, now the tires is all muddy to put her on the lift again. That <laughs> mojo knows better. He's already at the door. We got something dragging. Time to do some investigating, though. So I don't know if you guys could hear the noise in the video, but I could definitely feel it. And it got worse at second gear, and I thought, I mean, what could it be? The drive shaft rubbing, the pinion angle, a wheel bearing? We checked all of that. Let me show you what we found. So first thing is the wheel bearings up front. They're all tight. Working our way back here, drive shaft. Usually there'd be a shiny spot where it's rubbing. Same thing on the wheels. Wheels aren't rubbing on ball joints or anything like that. And then I thought we figured it out. The slip yoke. A lot of times the rear end will move forward or back when you do a flip kit. So we marked it, slid it out. We got like this much engagement in the splines. It's definitely not that. What else did we check? I don't know. We checked everything. And then I got the bright idea to do this. That axle bearing is toast. Let's go look at this side, which is gooder. When I do axle bearings or wheel bearings or U-joints, you do them both, because that tire turned just as many times as this tire. So if we take it apart, we're gonna do them both. And this is a C-clip axle, so we'll pop the rear cover off, pull that bolt out, pull the center pin out, push them in, pop the clips out, slide them out, and I think they're pressed into the axle tube. I think it's a eight and three ace we determined. Uh, it's definitely not an eight and three quarter. I'm guessing it's an eight and three ace, but they use the same axle bearing on an eight and three ace as a nine and a half or nine and three quarter. So either way, same axle bearings. I'm not saying this is how it should sound, but it's much better. Barely any movement. So that's two weeks in a row. Exhaust. Last week, the brakes were absolutely terrible on the 84 Chevy one ton, and the guy had drilled holes in the mufflers. So I'm wondering if the exhaust overpowered the sound that the uh, caliper was making, dragging against the rotor. And this thing was my buddy's, the Mopar Madman, and this exhaust was terribly loud, and he told me that. And he didn't drive this thing a whole lot after he got it together. I don't even know if he drove it together, drove it when he had the 318 automatic when he bought it. But anyway, he didn't drive this thing much, but I think it was just so obnoxiously loud and vibrating the exhaust off the floor that he didn't feel that. But I didn't make it a quarter mile and I had to turn around because I'm like, this is not gonna end well. You can see the brake dust coming from when you look at it real close and upon further inspection. I can't believe the axle seal didn't leak, but we're gonna do those at the same time. And maybe that's why the rear diff was low. I told you she was about a quart low. And that was probably because that axle seal was smoked or maybe it was low and that's what caused the uh, axle bearing to go out. Who knows? But anyway, I think it's not good. It's probably rubbing against the brake shoes, but we're definitely not gonna fix that right now. So yeah, exhaust, put good exhaust on so you can hear all the other stuff that's going bad in your car or run really loud exhaust and then just forget about the axle bearings and the brakes and everything else. That's my tech tip of the day, exhaust. Take it or leave it. I am exhausted. Duff is upset that he doesn't get to go for much of a ride this week. We still gotta figure out wheels and tires, which I, I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna order the eight inch Mopar Rally, seven inch Mopar Rallies put the existing Mickey Thompson's on there, white letters in. We're gonna use our fancy Mopar cop caps. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be great once we get some axle bearings in. So there you have it, folks. We did a, a pretty good transformation. We almost got this thing road ready. We put headers on it. We got full exhaust on it. We did a flip kit in the rear. We got wheel and tire size figured out. We serviced it. Uh, we put lower control arms up front. We cut some coils. We put a new brake hose on the back. Tighten up the belts, uh, change the oil, just a bunch of piddly things. But this is the stuff that you get. You buy a pretty much complete vehicle, but it, it was a little bit of a project, and then it just snowballs from there. And there's, I'm sure there's going to be other bugs that we have to work out. We never check the lights. 
it's gonna need an alignment like that. So there you have it. Thank you very much for watching. If you wanna own this thing, it will be available. Price and availability in the video description down below. I kinda wanna bomb around in this pickup a little bit, but I kinda don't really care because you can't keep them all and it's not super high on my priority list. So hope you had a very Merry Christmas. If you're still looking for a gift for that special someone or that special someone's looking for a gift for you and you, and you, you need a super scraper or a magnetic screwdriver or a magnetic can koozie or a banner or a shirt or a cap or a beanie cap, get yourself a beanie cap. Get it quick before they sell out. Hit us up at mortski.com. Uh, thank you to everybody who's uh, made purchases. I hope everybody has a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays and whatever it is you celebrate and bah humbug and so on and so forth. I'm going to go crack a sandwich and figure out what we're going to work on next week. Oh yeah, White Lightning had a major suspension failure. Lord pickups, they're great. But I put like 2,000 miles on that thing this winter already because it's a beater with a heater and it works real good. But we got to get that fixed because it's got to go to the body shop the day after Christmas. So we gotta make it so it can drive into the body shop and not be dragging a torsion bar on the ground. So more on that later. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done so long as you were having fun. Mopars are fun. They're a little tricky to lower, but I think we got her figured out now for the next one. On to the next one. Yeah, what do you want for Christmas? A ride? Okay, we can do that. But wait, you're probably wondering, Mordsky, would you Photoshop some wheels on your thumbnail? No, oh, we've been slaving away here yet. Look what we found. I'm not sure of the brand of these wheels. I call them a hard eight. Uh, we use the same lug nuts and center caps. These are 15 by eight all the way around. No stagger. It's what I had. I got five of them. Somebody took them off a Jeep. The buddy bottom was going to put on his Scout, the Elf of Wealth. And uh, they're four and a half volt pattern. The Scouts are five and a half, so we got them. Let's save tires back on there. She looks good. Buy some new center caps, maybe some shorter ones, maybe black ones. I don't know, put some new lug nuts on there. She's gonna be good though. She's foggy. You barely see the old uh, I Heart Hot Moms flag. We're gonna have to change that to something different, eh, Duff? But yeah, this thing is good. We got that NASCAR theme. White letters out, yep. She's got a whole a lot of camber. Hopefully they can get that out of the alignment. But yeah, that's what we did. Not saying they still might not wear those uh, Mopar rally wheels after Christmas. Cop wheels, whatever. All right, thanks for sticking around. See you next time. No, we still can't go for a ride. We do have wheel bearings though to go with it if somebody wants to buy this thing. An axle seal, Napa Todd had them on hand, picked them up this morning. You know what I'm saying, man? What you talking about, Willis?